Hello, Arbitrators. I'm Garrett Harriman, your host. Art. What is it? Can an a priori definition of art exist? Most importantly, if it's your first time in art club, do you have to art? I've assembled a panel of people who actually have qualifications for once to help answer these questions. To my left is Matt, cheese man in Spanish Gamble, who went to school for art. Hello. To his left is colorful prismatic, maiden of mysterious pseudonyms. Hi. Then David Perry, who yeah. finds cartoons appealing. I do. It's true. And Uncle Rock with a Strap on, Rezo, who draws his own pornography. I'm going to pick the brains of this oh, August group. I don't get group. to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick the brains of this August panel about art, and you're going to cotton to it. In so January? Yes. August panel. We're just that good. So, oh, uh, oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to see myself out now. <laughs> <laughs> so starting with you, uh, Matt... What is art? What is your, your opinion? What is that? Well, is it I, a thing? Is it a thing? No, so I actually went to art school, as they say. And, uh, they triangles. Made... Triangles, yes. <laughs> the triangles. I've, I've been doing the triangles for 25 years. Um, no, uh, we, we took these foundation classes where they make you like take basic art, do different mediums, and then there's this one, which the teacher is actually one of my favorite people on the planet. His name is Richard Fruth. Mm -hmm. And he was a sculptor, and he had st stickers that he would give out freely to students and people to go plant around the city, and they said things like, the fruit is out there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle the fruit. Like, <laughs> do you see the fruit? Yeah. The fruit can set you free. <laughs> and so he was a very funny man, and also he was an adjunct professor, so he, he wasn't tenured. And so he would say shit, like Glidden, mm -hmm. to fuck with these students who had to take his classes. These kids either had their own concepts of art or their own plans of what they wanted to do or what they thought. And then he would come up there and be like, and, like, and, and fuck with what you thought. And so we actually had one day where they gave us all a writing assignment. And I think it was like in class where we had to write and answer it in class. And he asked us all what art was. And so everybody had all their different answers. And of course, if you Wikipedia it, I'm going to do it right now and get it out of the way. Noun, art, skill, cunning, artifice, craft. Those are like the words that describe it. Art, also called in quotation in parentheses, to distinguish it from other art forms, visual art, a visual object or experience consciously created through an expression of skill or imagination. And then there's a couple of things. So anyway, my answer, I still remember this, was in my book, I looked at, I looked at art as like magic. Like in, in the magic world, you've got like light magic and dark magic, but it's all magic. So like, you know, like, look at the, the... I was going to bring this up, and I'm glad I just remembered it. The bodies ex ex exhibit. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm talking about? The bodies yeah. exhibit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are made from people, and some of those bodies were, like, donated prisoners from Chinese prisons. <laughs> not all Chinese prisoners are... Not to make anybody mad about this, but not all Chinese prisoners should be in jail or willingly donate their bodies to science. So that's... Willingly. But I PM. still consider that art. So that's dark art. Like people make, people make art out of Ed Gein. Make art in the lamps out of nipples and shit. Well, uh, uh, here's the thing. So did Mengele actually? On the subject of the bodies exhibit, I was pissed when I learned that you don't actually get to pick how they pose you. You don't get to. Yeah, it's, that's a bit shitty. It's your corpse. How do you even apply for to be in the bodies exhibit? Can you still do that? Is it like a running thing, like a can wax put, museum? Can you put it in your suicide note? I demand this. Yeah, put it in your will. I want, I want my corpse after death to be in the bodies exhibit, doing the things I loved in life. Well, we all know, know why. We all know <laughs> why they won't let you get posed the way you want to get posed. Because <laughs> we already know the way you want to die. We never brought that. We didn't bring that up. I. We knew that it was some weird sexual thing. We talked about oh. that. Yeah, that's, on, that's been recorded. As uh, yeah. as art students, we can easily visualize what you were intending. Cooking. In whatever form it would have ended up in. Cooking and drawing? Cooking and drawing? Okay. Um, but no, so, yeah, I, I look at art as... Things in my butt? Yes, absolutely. There you go. Uh, like everything's either an art or a science. You know, you've got the science of painting and you've got the art of being a math teacher. And that's what I think. Well, you okay. have gray areas there, because, you know, where does baking exist on that? It's a science and an art. Well, then yeah, yeah. so you can have science Both and art. Right in the damn middle. Mm -hmm. Right smack in the middle. Colorful. What, is, what would you say art is? Uh, and to add to that, I was kind of thinking on my way here, um, 
you know, the, the conscious effort of art is definitely a thing. And then you think of people like engineers, like even mechanical engineers, like the way that certain machines work and looking at the mm -hmm. insides of them and seeing how these gears mm. turn and the pulleys do all the things. It's actually a very beautiful process that works so amazing and you're like how does this stuff not mess up more often oh when i see honestly yeah, <laughs> I can about intricate that it messes machines. up all the time i work on these machines i just fixed my <laughs> washing machine so i thought about it a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> my dad's high school class rebuilt a barracuda i don't know how to change my oil <laughs> I oh, heard barracuda, right, a barracuda and thought a of car. a fish. A car, yeah. yes. I also thought <laughs> of a fish. They so... rebuilt a barracuda. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how you re rebuild a barracuda. It starts with a welding okay. torch in the ocean. <laughs> Imagine like this little barracuda and that, that sound from the $6 million man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining myself with like gloves up to my elbows just yelling at nurses like, The heart, damn you! I need the heart! <laughs> a frankenfish. Yes. Yeah, I guess I, I agree with uh, Matt over there and thinking just it's almost anything you do could be art depending on what your intentions are and doing it and sometimes in spite of your intentions because I know a lot of people who work with machines that would maybe start a fight with you if you called them an artist. <laughs> like, but, uh, hey buddy, that's our word. That's all I got. <laughs> That gun line is masterful. Pat! <laughs> <laughs> Say it again! Wait a minute, what did this, what did this just become? <laughs> I thought you were angry. Why? I was angry! <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah. Say art one more motherfucking time. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they speak art in Prague? <laughs> That's the dialogue. To Tell us mind. what an art looks like. <laughs> Does it look like a bitch? <laughs> what? <laughs> art? Blam! <laughs> David. I actually don't really have that. Like, art isn't the word that I struggle with when it comes to, like, defining it. Like, for, as far as I'm concerned, art is pretty much just, like, the creative application of, of a skill or, or knowledge. It's the creative part that gets you get tripped up on. Like, what... Is it is it or is it not creative? And you get like trapped like a lot of times you get trapped in like the whole what is art question when you're dealing with with things like you know like Jackson Pollock or you know those more famous ones where they they, they argue like and there's the people who argue like well look I don't have to really think about what I'm doing to make it art like the people who come to see it are the ones that bring like they bring they bring it like the art to what I'm doing it's like no nah, sorry the question nah. wasn't was Jackson Pollock making art out of paint the question was could jackson pollock drive while loaded on alcohol and the answer is no <laughs> oh uncle rezo what is your uh, art definition well the illustrious mr perry brought up creative process i believe you can create you can make art by also being very very destructive Okay. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You smash a vase. What have you created? Gallagher. <laughs> you, yeah, you smash That's a watermelon. A watermelon. Uh, watermelon. You yeah. smash Hiroshima, and what do you get? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you anime. Oh, well, you could bring up the whole dead. Japanese thing where they like mend uh, yes. ceramics with gold. But mm. then there's also other shit. Like I saw this thing on uh, like they, on the internet. I'm just gonna say internet, social media, where this guy would like lay out. Um, uh, gunpowder, something to explode, something flammable yeah. in in like people's in the shape of people's faces, and then like set on fire, and it's <laughs> like makes a portrait. Mm -hmm. That's kind of destructively creative. But I don't think creation or destruction is really. It's not really a thing. You're just changing one thing into another. What is this entropy versus atrophy? You guys know, but is that the entropy thing? versus. Are you creating and destructing? Right. The opposite is, of entropy be. Is it atrophy? No, no, atrophy, atrophy is like entropy the... Are, are related. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, first of all, like, before I, I... I don't want to set this out loud, but can one of you define those words? Atrophy is uh, wasting away through lack of use. Yeah. Okay. Um, entropy is um, loss Breaking of energy down a in a system. Yeah. yeah. Or loss Over of time, unavoidable systems loss of break down in into system. chaos. Yeah. So atrophy and entropy are basically just death in at different stages. So I should just shut the fuck up. 
No, no. I mean, on a podcast, if that's, you want that, to, that's basically just, just get it out. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That is, you're right. Either way. Uh, uh, I tell a story? That's kind of what we do here. Hey, well. <laughs> aside from a Stuff few, tells nicely. Aside from a few niggling details, I pretty much agree with everyone at the table. You know, Ooh, podcast like, over. Cool, yeah. I was like, all right, we can all go home now. Well, that was on, easy. On what is an art? What is an art? Yes. Or I have done what art. What is the value of art? Or how does one value art? Well, that's See, not, that's, that's a different, yeah, different question. question. But, yeah. Those are the weeds. I mean, think about it. Like when you make these. sushi, you're killing something and turning it into a piece of artwork. This is true. But you got to really need that octopus for a while. Have, have you seen how they it? kill squid? That's a kind of art it's it, it, It's crazy. Have you seen how they kill squid, like when they catch him? Oh. No. It's like, it, it's, 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 a, no. It's, it's like a karate chop, Snap. but like, they just like, barely tap it and dead squid. Dead squid. Just little karate chop, dead squid. And giant sad face. Oh my gosh, like, Can I use like a Buzz Lightyear action figure? Just... Maybe. Yeah. Guys, it... I like to not know how my things are killed. Oh, and then you're really yeah. not going to win us. <laughs> I, I work in meat and seafood in my day job. Oh. You ever seen a steak? It's got kind of like bloody parts in it. The best yeah, kind? Those are the ones that look good. Uh, you know why there's still blood in that steak? Because when they kill the cow, they bleed the cow out. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Well, what? why wouldn't they be able to bleed a cow out? Because maybe it, it fighting. maybe it tensed up right mm-hmm. before it died because it knew, it was, knew it was gonna go. So the ones with blood still in them are the ones they couldn't bleed out because that cow saw it coming. <laughs> now you know. I this one knew, know, which is a bit of a shame because that means that cow should I work live. With steaks, it makes me sad. The butcher's art. <laughs> yes, butchery is an art. It is. There's a whole there's a whole passage in one of these Dallas books where they talk about a butcher knowing where to like cleave the meat. And I'm learning now like how to do steaks. And when you're cleaning things, like it 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 becomes intuitive. But if you 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 the pro the the, the whole point of the butchery industry is to make money. That's the whole point of every industry. Yeah, most of them anyway. Yeah, no not a, the porn industry. Waste. I'm a little on the fence about that one. Well. The- yeah, so are some of the actresses. It's not all actually. about the money. There's also <laughs> sex involved. What's more powerful, sex or money? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, but With when, money, when you can buy all the sex you want. I don't know. That's true. No. With no. all the sex, if you're willing not, to sex you anyone, you might not But if you money. have money and <laughs> ethics... There's also stuff that's legitimately well, impossible. Okay. I mean, are we, do, no, no, I do, mean, do, in terms do we really need to like well, segue into DeviantArt sex, that quickly? I think oh. I'm the one who derailed this one. I don't think we need to segue into DeviantArt that fast. So, now, uh, do you mean like actual Deviant Art forms or the, oh, I mean, the website? Com. Com. The website. I was gonna say yes. because we are. I'm from Cincinnati, where Robert Maplethorpe. Had a, <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. A bit of a stirring in the I think late '80s. You know anything about Robert Maplethorpe? I do not. Yep. He uh, was a photographer and a, a gay man. And he was not afraid to push the boundaries with his photography. Was that Goatsy? Did he come up with that? He he did it in a very public way, oh. and then th- then did it in Cincinnati, which is not even though like we go blue for like voting. There's yeah. a lot of really conservative and like rich businessy people there. So like yeah, they were not cool. <laughs> you're in San Fran. You're like, in San Francisco. Like one Sorry. of his photos, I think, is like a like BDSM whip. But like in somebody's butt, but oh. it's like really artistically done. <laughs> like, oh well, wow. they're they're like black and white photographs of like <laughs> really homoerotic sex acts, and it's just like we're gonna put this in an art museum and specifically people are gonna... BDSM. Specifically, this is a cat of nine tails. He's, oh, I see what he did there. He's <laughs> also he's also best friends with Patty. Sorry, who's the one who wrote uh, Hurst? Hurst. No, not Hurst. <laughs> with the gun. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one of our producers uh, is uh, unhappy. You didn't like that. Um, fuck, damn it, Patty. Now I'm even more lost. Shoot, so, what was I talking about? Yeah, do we need to rerail on, the strain? On that, uh, while you gather your thoughts, the I'm home uh, a word that I was right I was expecting to hear in the definitions of art that I didn't was context. I didn't hear. Does art require context to be considered art? No. No. Okay, so that's a good. Next question. I mean, with the going, the moving into the creativity angle of things, you, you're going to run into that problem. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because okay, so now this is an example I'll give. 
it can be very important, but it depends on what the art is. Duchamp, Duchamp, literally went and bought a toilet, and then on his way to an art gallery, and then set it up, and the the and called it a uh, fountain. Yes. And then he also painted a picture of a pipe. Was there something else? Not sure. This about is it. not a Ooh. pipe. Um, I know this is not a pipe. Anyway. <clears throat> There is, uh, I can't, uh, I'll try and look it up for the next segment, but the, there is a couple artists that use different, basically like hanging cardboard mm. or something, where if you step all the way back, it makes this wonderful landscape or beautiful picture. But single, like if you're up close to it, you don't notice that it is this thing. It's just the hanging pieces of cardboard. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what is it? For that, you need the you you need to, to step up. back and see the whole context of it. Floating puzzles. But it doesn't necessarily like what they were thinking about as they were hanging these isn't necessarily taken into. But you do have to know to see the whole picture. Yeah, that's a montage piece. You have to like you know they have like all the different things that are set up and you kind of can walk around it. But until you get like stand in, in front of it in just the right angle, then you see oh it's. Sylvester Stallone. Well, I mean, dude, but this is all made out of a transmissions. Everything is everything is in context to some degree, whether it's if it's absurd or abstract. I had a friend when I was in my early college days. I was studying photography in Tennessee, and one of my friends who was an abstract painter, I went to visit him in the art house, and uh, he had these like palette knives, and he had this like canvas, and it just looked like an open wound. It was. It wasn't a form. It wasn't like a landscape. It wasn't a portrait. It was just this. These forms and colors and movements and but it was like. Had con emotional contextual like context, because he created it. And, I mean, because of how it, it, it. Did you did you watch the Daredevil show? Yes. It created the idea of the wound. Well, also art. I mean, art especially. It's it's. Context is very personal. If it's not in like an auction, hmm. it's if it's not based on art history or the art world, then it's very personal. People only buy art that, that responds to them. Well, hmm. there's always going to be context in art, always, because art is, can't be created in a vacuum and it can't be presented in a vacuum. There's always going to be some kind of context. I think the maybe the important question is: Does our art require intent? Doesn't have to be intent behind the art. I'm gonna call the Hoover Company because I want them to know if art can be made with a vacuum. <laughs> well, in all likelihood, say, the answer is I think yes. that is a challenge, and I that is on my docket now. Well, no. in all likelihood, there's going to be some what asshole who decides to go all Pollock inside of a vacuum now. Oh, inevitably that art is gonna suck. There was a uh, a medical. God damn you! you there was a had to do it. There was a medical paper written um, <laughs> in the. 1970s called Vacuum Injuries and the Human Penis. <laughs> oh my god. The way that they phrase like scientific studies, I just fucking love. Mm. Yes. Um, Anyone else think just scary movie? That was the first thing that. Yeah. Mm. That was um, scary yeah. Movie. The, study, the study looked specifically at three patients and um, I, they. One of the phrases, like, in, in the study was. Despite the ingenious method, they didn't think through what could happen. <laughs> <laughs> there have been people that the sexologists were, were so yes. preoccupied with whether or not they could. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Never God. stopped to think if they should. Oh, one of the guys in the Darwin Awards like rigged up his like a uh, like some kind of a uh, power tool mm -hmm. to his couch so that he could have sex with the couch. And then <laughs> in the future, okay. I will have anytime to you're adding house. a power tool to have sex, it's gonna be a bad idea. Well, see, now the way that he passed is that his splooge hit like an open wire and he got electrocuted. Oh. Like, and he's ah. like on the couch. And I, I don't remember if all this is correct, but like I always say, don't Some... let the truth get in the way of a good story, right? Okay, Just... anytime you add <laughs> hey. a power tool to, to a have sex, sex situation. To it's going to end badly. Notes for the future, always waterproof your sex bot. <laughs> it brings a whole new meaning to getting funky in Milwaukee. <laughs> okay, so real talk, though. We talked about Jackson Pollock earlier. And I'm supposed to be the perv here. Yeah, well, 
I do what I can. <laughs> um, so I, I and you do went, it well. So I, like I said, I started out in Tennessee for school, and because college was the expectation, and I was a bad student who only got accepted to one place, a Christian college. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and the only thing that I had experience or interest in was photography. I took a photography class, and I was like, I, I had originally declared myself a film studies major, and then I took a, a photography class, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Because it was still darkroom photography at the time. They hadn't killed the darkroom yet. and um, But I ended up... So I was a bad student. And it was, college was expensive. And then my grandma was getting sick. So my everyone moved back to Cincinnati. And I transferred to NKU. And they were actively killing their darkroom. And so I had to switch to digital photography. Which made me hate myself. Which then I said switch to, to studio arts. So I've done like painting, ceramics, blah, 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 blah. So anyway... When I transferred up to NKU, I was still 20 years old. I hadn't turned 21 yet. There was this art trip up to art. Uh, everyone in the art department, there's a trip to Chicago. We were going to like go to the art museum and tour a couple places and be there for like three days. And I got to walk around. I was good. It takes me forever to get to the fucking point. The point is, I, I walked around the Cincinnati, I mean, the Chicago Art Museum, you know, famous scene in Ferris Bueller's Day mm -hmm. Off where he like, they came and stares into the dots. Yeah. I got to do that Point for a while. It was cool. It was same really, painting? It, yeah, same nice painting. Hand. And that, that was his first one, wasn't it? We can talk, I, we, that I don't know. We can talk about that in a minute. He, he, he was only like 26 when he did that, mm -hmm. by the way, which is insane. Um, but the painting that I spent the most time in front of was a Jackson Pollock. It, I think it was the one with the like three pink lines kind of in the middle. It's, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like everything's all over the place. But so he would, he would paint to jazz... And and just hearing about it and hearing people talk about it and seeing the imagery of it, it's just like, yeah, this, yeah, that, like one way or the other. But I stared at that painting for like an hour because there's just so much going on. And it's not just like flat color. It's it's paint. It's got texture and layers and it's just you can you, you can hear the jazz and you as you see and I'm just you get lost in it. That's one of the things about photography or painting that with um, the structuring is that you have to do it in a way that keeps their eye going around it, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. it flies off this way. Yeah, it's like, I think it's called line of sight. In okay. photography, they call it the arbitrary cutoff. Like mm -hmm. I, So when optics entered the art world, you started to, instead of seeing the, the man regally posed in the middle, or like the family, it was like, oh, this guy's arm's coming off the side here. Like, that mm -hmm. wouldn't have happened if they... So a lot of people made the argument that the Renaissance wasn't just like a birth of human creativity it was actually around the time that we discovered optics mm -hmm. mm. yeah composition well wow. not just composition but the technology itself you could put a, a large format viewfinder which they ended up adding chemicals to to make photography so to think about the old large format camera mm -hmm. that technology has been around since we've had glass since galileo with the lens mm -hmm. so people could go out into nature put this box down put their head over the thing and see real life put transparent paper over it and draw on it like you could, in the Greek times, like a light board. They discovered the pinhole camera in like Greek, in like Greek, like time period. Mm. Well, camera means dark room. Hmm. Put a That's get where it comes from. Block out all the light in the room. Put a tiny hole in the middle of the far wall. And if it's like you're, you're just people walking on the street, on the back wall of that room will be the perfect. Up inverted image of everything that's happening outside, mm -hmm. like clear as day, and they've known about this since like thousands of years. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't until we until we discovered uh, that silver crystals oxidize that we started to figure out, oh, we can take, capture that image, capture that image, and now computers. Well, I guess I'm just an asshole because well, I hate. Completes our I hate episode on a brief history of computers. Oh. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm just an asshole because I hate Pollock's guts. And I also despise Picasso. So, uh, Picasso's different. You, I, I, I think Picasso was a huge asshole. And he also <laughs> did, <laughs> he did not, he literally, there's records of him going into this exhibit that they had this exhibit from this like African tribe or this, <laughs> it was something where it was in that, it looked like that shit that he did that he turned abstract stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they have records of people seeing him visit this exhibit. He got a private viewing of it before it, it went to the public. And not long after that, He's a, all of a sudden a genius for doing this abstract art. If you look at his early work, it looks like like romanticism or some shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's I mean, he's a classically trained artist. Yeah, 
thing is, he also came out as being this... The most pretentious quote I ever heard from him that mm -hmm. makes me want to dig up nice his bones and turn it into a fucking marionette... That's personal. ...is, uh... <laughs> in order to be a real artist, I had to learn to draw like a child again or some shit like that. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. No. I can't even so, do the, like, wanna go to Spain thing. With a shovel? I want to, like, smack my... Yeah! Can okay. we? I will dig him up all you got day. Chorizo, carry the vinegar. I do have a really good point to that, and I think it's been a lot of just with like the research I've done. There is a certain age we get to that we start getting really self-conscious about our art, and there is a large percentage of of people who stop doing our eighth grade freshman year. So you're talking because, about like as a child learning how to create, not mm. as an artist. Yes, yeah. about creating for you. Creating because you love to create and not caring what the other people are thinking. You bringing this up to your parents, you know that they're going to be like, this is the best thing that anyone has done ever. Oh my gosh, you are just a master. Did it make it on the and fridge? <laughs> right? I mean, even if it didn't, there, there's maybe a thousand things already on there. You can't just, you know, keep putting stuff up there. It doesn't matter. You Get are lunch. That thing sense. is awesome. Well, it might just You be... are being told that. So being creating as a child is different. It's not saying I'm going back to how I drew as a child, but the concept of what I was thinking when I was creating as a ch child that I love to draw, let's draw, mm. and get rid of what the outside world is putting on me. That well, is I think that's, I don't even think that's necessarily just with, with like you were talking about, we get self-conscious about art, but I would, I was getting ready to say something and then you made, you made like, you said something that was even more relevant to that, which is like right around eighth grade. Oh, you mean when people start getting self-conscious about everything? How yes. dare you keep making a point? <laughs> you, you kept going on to that, and I was like, in my head, what I was thinking was, I really want to go to the Louvre just so I can find like a lounge and take a magnet and something I've drawn and put it on the fridge in the lounge at the Louvre <laughs> and just tell people, yeah, I've got art hanging in the Louvre. <laughs> well, that's amazing. So since we've gotten on to that, we started touching on this. Um, who is who is everyone's favorite artist? So we'll start with Dave's. Who is um, your favorite artist? Well, okay, so. As far as fine art, I actually don't know as much about fine art as people probably assume that I do, but my favorite painter has always been Rembrandt. I like Rembrandt, just because I really like that, like, I just like the portraiture. I like that really, really rich, deep, Lighting. high contrast, chiaroscuro sort of romantic. I like, I like that. <clears throat> I like his, his how he, he does lighting. That's my favorite. Yes. Rembrandt. Yeah, yeah. Rembrandt's always been my favorite. Bit of a cliche artist to choose, but there Nick. it is. Well, I send ten dollars every month to my favorite artist. What I would fans page is this? <laughs> it's a Patreon. <laughs> it's it was, it was, it's a Patreon. I'm sorry. It was in fact Rembrandt's only. <laughs> Look at the well, lighting. The thing is, <laughs> when it comes to my favorite artist, there are different levels to it. Because what do I get out of the art in regards to, um, well, his safe for work stuff is Liefeldian Abomination. That, that's his, uh, his nom de pen. Can you say that slower and in English? Liefeldian Abomination. You know, like Rob Liefeld? The Rob. comic artist. Yeah. Okay, so he's, he's not great. He's, well, this art needs enough. context. He's infamous for drawing the hugely muscled, like, edgy art out in comics of the, you know, 90s. Lefeldian Abomination, that, that's not what they do. Their artwork is... Well, the not safe for work stuff is great because it hits most of my major points, but when I talk about, like, my favorite classical artist, like, one I like just because of what they draw and their technique and all that, again, that's another ball of wax. Is there an answer in our near future? Yes. Salvador Dali. Okay. Hey! Another incredibly pretentious artist, but... Yes, but he also almost died in a, you know, old diving suit. Yes, yes he did. He was be he was a weird asshole. Super fucking weird. He but was super weird, but he was also eater? super entertaining. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, yeah, almost died at a party with Andy Warhol. Yep. But, you know, 
That list is probably the trying longer. to get him. <laughs> now he was suffocating in this diving suit yeah. and almost died. And they were they were like trying like hell to get him out of this fucking because he he, did, he arrived at the party in a diving suit in an old diving suit. You know, yeah. Like the spun brass. That's impressive, yes. depending on how old he was, because those things are heavy. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they weigh easily ninety pounds. We're talking about Warhol, so I believe it was the it would have been the sixties, at least. Yeah. But yeah, there are. I, have I have seen Warhols in person, which is not really that impressive thing to say as an artist, but as a as an American, I've been. I was, I've seen Warhols in person. Though, there I is the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> there is something that can happen among people who enjoy. Hentai, which on is, that one, let's move. To, <laughs> let him finish this, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> there are cases where, okay, I have found an artist that, okay, they they're good at the dirty part, but then I start following it just because they have amazing backgrounds or techniques with anything that is n completely non-sexual. You read it for the articles. <laughs> yes, I, I literally end up in that it's state. It's the art where, version of. Do you watch? Do you look at hentai? Yes, but I did not inhale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I miss the titties for the for the ocean. <laughs> that, Going to a nude beach and seeing the ocean, not the naked bodies. Do you know that we're going to put that on your gravestone someday? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I miss the titties for the ocean. <laughs> right next to my body's exhibit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gamble, what? Who's your favorite artist? I also don't want to be a cliche, but I... And, and, well, okay, so before I say what ra uh, vague, generic art... If you... If my, I, ah, <clears throat> words. <laughs> I'm... In, English is my first language, technically speaking. <laughs> um, so, depends on the medium. I've got a different favorite artists for different mediums. So, um, when I studied yeah. photography, photography Cartier-Bresson uh, is known as the, 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 the decisive moment. He took this picture of this guy stepping off a plank, like into a pot, like puddle of water, but the, his heel of his boot is like a millimeter off the surface, and so he was like very influential photographer, very. And I spent a lot of time studying that fucking art. Uh, then In was, animation, we call it the contact pose. Yes, uh, Robert Frank. Oh, God, it's been so long. Well, anyway, there was a guy. I'm just gonna say it. I am a Van Gogh man. Hmm. I, we, I live in Cincinnati, and I'm lucky enough that we have we have the painting that was the last one before he died. Mm -hmm. It's like two strangers in the woods, but it, it just looks like these two ghosts in the middle of this field. And when, you, when you're up like, near a Van Gogh, the, the, when I fell in love with Van Gogh, it wasn't even a painting. I was, it was I, his ear. Yes, it was, it was his ear. <laughs> what a lovely gift for a date. Um, <laughs> our our friends... Spring sweet nothings. Our, our friend Joa, her first dorm was like an apartment, and we used to always have. This, yep, I remember that. We used to always party together and have these family nights, and this was art school. And I'd family nights or famine nights, I, I was family oh, nights with cheap Carlo Rossi yes. and the hamburger helper and shit. But um, she had a a uh, like a college dorm poster, like it was huge though. But it was Vincent Van Gogh's cherry blossom. Is that what it's called? I think so. I so, don't know as much about Van Gogh. So it's it's if you've ever seen the picture online or in a book, it's just this beautiful blue background yeah, with yeah. this like winding gnarly tree with these beautiful pink like flowers on it. And it's just it's just a very aesthetically pleasing image. Yeah, they're cherry blossoms. It's a cherry blossom tree, I believe. But I got up close to this this um poster at at one of these parties where we're just hanging out and I looked into the blue seeing how big it was and up close, and even though know, it was a flat surface, they had somehow shown all of the textures, and, and in every inch of the blue, it looked like clear, plain blue, was textured swirls and like fingerprints. and like I don't know if he used his fingers or brushes, mm. because it's just everywhere. And then when you look at how it sets up against the line work of the tree and the flowers, it's so much texture. It's like, to see the imagery, you're like, yeah, that's pretty. But to see it in person or to like to see it for real, there's so much. Like if you were tripping on shrooms, that shit be moving all over the goddamn place. There's a terrain to painting. Yes. Yeah. And I've always I've always been photography. Yes. I've always been very drawn to people who use very heavy, you know, textured. Thick. Mm. Well, yeah. 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 That, that's part of the in, in one of those cases. It literally is part of oil painting. An yeah. Important part of oil painting. And one of those like missing the 
the titties for the beat or for the ocean. <laughs> for the beat. For the one, beat. Of those, one of those <laughs> very <laughs> artists that hit that point. Boobs. Killer that's tofu. what they do with their backgrounds. Going for the beat. I don't, like they have this. I don't know if they do it with um, actual paint or if it's digital, but I love the brush strokes when they do water. I love mm -hmm. watercolor. Mm -hmm. Or you just mean water in general? Yes, just how they do, how they draw waves and oceans and that spray. See, I'm very drawn to light. There was one exhibit at the Cincinnati Art Museum. He was half black, half Japanese, and it was in like the 1800s or like turn of the century. And I don't remember where he trained. He trained in Europe, or he was anyway. He's already a controversial figure because at that time period, it wasn't cool to not be white, mm -hmm. and and it wasn't cool in society anyway. So he's multiracial and then classically trained, but he did this thing with light where you would see like this candle or like the sun or the, the it was something, it looked like it was glowing. Mm. The, like the painting style was kind of like faded. It, it didn't see, it didn't like grip me. It was very flat. But when he would paint like flame sources or light sources, that shit looked like it was actual light. And I yeah. was just like. It reminds me of the painting that I, that I really, really liked at the Smithsonian. With that was the uh, I think it was a Spanish painting and there was, there was the people uh, sitting around yes. in that in that courtyard with the lanterns. Yes. Yeah. Or have you ever seen that Van Gogh painting? Uh, at, it was like the first one he did at night, and there's like the artificial, the lit up like under the balcony, the awning, mm. and it's like the cobblestone and the mm. light pouring out, and it's just dark. Yeah. And then fucking starry, starry night, like. Yeah. Anyway. Well, speaking of mid different art forms, and I'm not gonna. I'm trying to get off this <laughs> platform real quick. Oh, I was. Uh, Don McLean. Have you ever heard the song Starry Starry Night? Yes. yes That's a fucking piece of art. About an artist by an artist. But nobody remembers him for anything but American, American pie. pie. I remember him because... Which the, was a joke. The year before he, he was famous for American Pie, he got booed off the stage at a Leonard Skinner concert. Mm -hmm. I liked Everybody Loves Me. Because it's about a dictator. I actually don't know anything about his catalog. <clears throat> oh, huh. besides right. American. I pie. think we should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's uh, let, let's give now. colorful a turn. Because we are colorful. Yeah. Who's your favorite artist? And uh, okay, we're I gonna was, take a break. Yes. Yes. So glad I was last because I panicked when I was like, "Oh, I have to know a name of a person." I gave you plenty <laughs> um, of time. <laughs> I know. And thank you for that. Just say Skinner, man. The first thing that came to mind for me, um, thinking back, was uh, I think I was in the fifth or sixth grade. I was going through a really rough time in my life. My mom was in and out of psych wards and I, I knew that I loved to pour things into art and I remember seeing a painting by Monet. And, in person? Huh? In person? Or just... No, no, okay. just uh, like we were studying. Monet. That, and we're, we're learning the art style and just the way that it's made. I, I won't pretend to know the all the terms, mm. but... To me, I looked at this and just saw that it was chaos made into something gorgeous. And the things that were going on with me at the time, it just resonated so hard that you can organize the chaos. Hmm. You can turn it into something beautiful. And that is what has really stuck with me. So I, I did had to remember a little bit who I was thinking of <laughs> at the time. Um, but it, it was uh, Monet, the, the water lily. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. The mm. one that just really hit me hard as Is a kid. It was really stuck. Yeah. yeah. We actually got it, to it see stuck with me. A, uh, uh, an actual you, you Monet. Hear it's Johnny Carson. Hmm? That yeah, was really cool. The, my, the Monet Something that we saw. The listeners will catch that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's the only one who heard me make a joke. <laughs> ah. Uh, you two just missed out. You still have to catch that in editing. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to take a short break for our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to talk about art style. What is it? How do you tell the difference? And is there a difference between genre and style within fine art? The Arbitrarium presents Unknowable History. September 1st, 1939. The Third Reich invades Poland at the command of the Fuhrer and his haggard second-hand catamite, Chief Scientist Hansi Hans Kammler. The invasion was a success. The Fuhrer had achieved his ulterior goal of securing Poland's top secret reserve of an amoebic radioactive substance codenamed Zerum 525. 
Over the course of the ensuing war, the SS Thule Society would use this substance, which emitted an erotic violet glow, to power a bell-shaped steel contraption often theorized in juvenile conspiracy theories to be a UFO, a time machine, or a secret chamber for the coital escapades of the Fuhrer and his bemused boy Wunder. The truth, however, is far more sophomoric. The bell, true to its name, was a device built as Adolf's time telephone a temporal communication device and the clandestine origin of the ATT Telecommunications Company. Recently decrypted personnel files indicate that Hitler's intended use for the device was to seek ownership of a rare and valuable limited edition life-sized wax sculpture of Wild Bill Hickok from the 1872 Montgomery Ward's Wish Book catalog, a treasure coveted by Midwestern pancake houses the world over. It was to be ordered and retained at a long-abandoned castle in North Herscheid until its recovery by the Nazis over a half-century later. Retaining this masterpiece at the time of its original release would offer the Fuhrer a reasonable price, before the notorious wartime inflation of fine western waxwork. But the Fuhrer's dream of owning this exquisite artifact of enlightened artistry and cultural achievement would be dashed violently when the Henge facility at which the ATT was being developed fell to an SAS commando raid as part of Operation Paperclip. The ATT, very nearly complete, was taken back to Bletchley Park in England for study. Upon hearing of the aphrodisiacal qualities of the ATT's glutinous purple blood fuel, the device was dismantled at the behest of Winston Churchill, who had come to Bletchley for the sole purpose of consuming every viscid blob of the substance to its last drop, which the pallid, gin-logged, wadded flesh of a man would spread over crumpets at tea time, the time of his greatest daily alcohol consumption. Once stripped of all empirically comprehensible and non-toxic properties by the Prime Minister's failing yet unforgiving bowels, the byproduct of the turgid English spectacle's digestion would be kept in a secret holding facility and used as a biological warfare deterrent, until finally being decommissioned in 1991 and sold on the American market as Nickelodeon's Gek. Expert historians now agree that while the Fuhrer's pursuit of the wax sculpture was bold and noble in its intent, his wit fell far short of the artwork's brilliance, and his plan was destined to fail on account of telephones weren't invented until 1876, four years after the sculpture's catalog debut. This was the true story of the fabled wonder weapon, the Nazi Bell, as verified by the secret journals of Winston Churchill himself, that squabbish, misshapen calamity of a gin well of a man. May God have mercy on the tormented souls of the youth who were sold his aged waist as a viscous, beglittered plaything. This has been Unknowable History. Welcome back. So, uh, now we're going to start off talking about style. What is style? How do you know what style is? Is it different from genre? Just different from art and movements. So well, we'll start off with Uncle Rezo here. Well, so far we've mostly discussed about visual art. I mean... Specifically fine art. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, of course, drag things into the mud, as usual. But we also should talk about other forms of artwork. Style, genre, especially in, reg in, the, in regards to this subject. Because... Like medium? Well, there's mediums and then there's all that. Personally, I think it's a it's a razor thin line between having. So I listen to a lot of punk rock, you mm -hmm. know, which is usually typified by being very raw, being very unrefined. But where is the line between you're a good punk rocker or just a shitty musician? Well, it didn't start out as being punk rock. It started out actually punk rock comes from the blues. Well, so does most m music, it, modern well, music. But but so, there actually there's a one of my favorite podcasts is called No Dogs from Space, and they go through early punk history, and it starts with the Stooges. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it actually starts before that. The Monks in the '60s, they were a group that everybody had their shtick. They would shave the middle of the top of their head so that they look like Byzantine monks, yeah. and then they literally that their song it was like. Wah, wah, nah, nah. I hate you with a passion, baby! Like, ha! Ah, I hate you! It was like in the 60s, it was a one off, it was weird as shit. But there's, and also, uh, ba 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 boom, now, now, the bird is the word. There, there were precursors <laughs> to punk 
And then, um, like, we say how much of it is surf music, too. Well, you know what one of the precursors... <laughs> Dick Dale. You know what one of the precursors to heavy metal is? Classical music. The Beatles. Have you ever heard the song, I Want You, She's So Heavy? Oh, yeah. That's, that's right. proto-metal. Have you heard Marcia Slav by Tchaikovsky? If I did, I wouldn't be able to answer that honestly. However, if you just change one instrument, it turns into a fucking heavy metal song. Hell yeah. There's just this genealogy with music. You know, it all... Everything comes from something else. It's evolution. Because, you know... So you're bringing up music as an art form, and, and we're talking about style. Yes. And punk is one of your favorite styles. Well, Do you like it because it's genre. unrefined? Genre? Yeah, yeah. what's... what? What's the genre versus style and genre? Well, you can have a genre, and then there's you can be, you have styles within genres. I would say if you're breaking it down like hierarchically, you've got genres, and then within genres, you've got styles. Well, then you've also got like you know if we're talking about the genre of metal, you've got how Tony Iommi plays the guitar versus mm -hmm. how Randy Rhodes played the guitar versus how well, then, Dick Dale. Dick Dale. He owned a lion. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He died relatively recently, too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Was it the lion? Within, within the last two years. <laughs> he got Siegfried. <laughs> but. <laughs> that was a. Of course, you wait till I take a drink. <laughs> that, that was a tiger. Which are That's actually true. scarier animals. Yes. yes so, what are. about. We were the talking music? about that earlier today. We're going to constantly derail this. Yeah. I don't know any of these people, so, like, but, what about the music? So, well, you said it's a hierarchical breakdown where. where you have styles within a genre, mm -hmm. and um, you have fusions of other how, things happening. How much distance has to be, or how different is a style from a genre? Like, how much does it have to change before it becomes a genre? A style right, can be down to, to, to art. A lot of times it's down from, to artist to artist, because the style is what like identifies that, like, the sound of a particular... Are we talking about genre versus style? How do they relate, basically? So, when I studied photography, I, I brought this up outside. When I studied photography, there was a a quote that I was told. And this is, so, a little side, every, in our little group, you know, everybody be like, you know, what are you into? What are you trying to do? Or what do you want to work on? And one of the girls, I want to shoot weddings and babies. Yeah. Like that, with a rifle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Exactly no. where my Now we're getting went. into my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, <laughs> but, but so people would like, people all the time in art school are always trying to say, well, that's, a his, wedding crasher. that's his style or whatever, you know, well, that's just my style. Oh, it's too, you're, you're putting too much contrast in your photos. Well, that's my style. Well, oh, this or that, well, this, no. So the quote in photography, in the genre of photography I'm just going to... Medium. Medium. I'd say that's more of a medium. In the but... medium of photography, which is a genre of art, I'm just going to abuse the English language. It's a medium of art. Let's okay, fine. Beat it like a redheaded stepchild. Oh. Yes, indeed. Okay, so, in photography... Genre is. Its safe word is earn. Earn. <laughs> My safe word is avocado. And when I get on tangents like this where I'm the one on stage... <laughs> avocado. Okay. Just finish it. Just, fin just finish it. Keep one going. picture out of focus is a mistake. Ten pictures out of focus is a series. A hundred pictures out of focus... Is a style. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. And I, w I was going to say, like, as far as music, like genre that. versus style, I feel like, it, you know, a bunch of different, like, genre is almost more about what you're singing about, what the music is about versus style is how you put it together. Yeah, well, how you individually. Well, genres are collections of tropes. That's essentially what a genre is. Yeah, you would yeah. be more qualified to make that distinction. I mean, like, because the, like, a, a punk rocker versus a class, no, nah, not classical, um, a pop mm -hmm. person, like, they can have a very similar style of singing or a similar style of instruments, but what they're singing about is so vastly different, so that's how, when you listen to them side by side, is where you would, like, I'm saying there's going to be overlaps, the whole yeah, circle deal. Hmm? Um, so why, why don't you yeah, like you well, got a pumpkin you, you got a pop it, and I was like yeah Iggy Pop Iggy Pop and interconnect so why, why in don't, the middle you, you've got oh, a Venn diagram orange. thank you there's a Venn diagram of styles yeah but the individual circles all the genres <laughs> sounds like this this Venn diagram looks more like the uh, Olympic lo logo yes yeah. Yeah. very much so yeah like it's not like a very simple Venn diagram by, uh, it's got like 20 <laughs> circles and they're all overlapping oh, in different God. stages like it's insane but um that is what my thoughts are. Why don't you like that? Uh, so you know that that said like tongue in cheek. Oh yeah, the Giorgio O'Keefe joke. No, no, no. I've no. made it a few times. No, the the out of focus thing. Oh, I don't like that. 
Because, okay, yeah, it's tongue in cheek. Well, yeah. I, when I when I hear whenever I hear that, because people say I, I have a style, they yeah. have a style. It's just like fuck your style. No, yeah, because <laughs> the, the the thing is, it's like that's what it sounds. Look, like. one 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 photograph out of focus is you know an accident or whatever. Three is whatever. It's like no. So what you're saying is, if you fuck up enough times, <laughs> like that's if you just stay, if you just stay bad, that's, don't that's what you're known for. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, Tucker Carlson has a career too. Okay. That's true. He d- he does. Um, Look at Biden's entire political career. All right. Which is yeah part of yeah. part of Doug. Fuck Doug up Carlson's enough, career. you start going upwards. This is true. He Fuck pretty upwards. much that's all. Pretty much all. Digging he does. towards China. Talks about Biden and fucks M and M's. Well, that way. We already just, we already talked about that. We did. That that was was are we moving week. on? That was last week. <laughs> I am yeah. moving on. So, uh, kind of, we we started getting into music, but we started off talking a lot about fine art, mm-hmm. and then now we're talking about music. Mm-hmm. What? What makes fine art fine art versus not fine art? Age. <laughs> That's I think one of those art art world questions. Ooh, it's, it's who, I think, who, who I determines mean, the value. I would say that's not far off as far as fine art. Like what we think of classically as fine art are things like painting. I mean, sculpture is mm-hmm. even like a newer addition to fine art. I would okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift this a little bit. Dancing. Okay. When does dancing go from being a form of expression to an art? Intent. If you're pulling your dick out, it's a form of expression. <laughs> but not in a school zone. If you're pulling your dick in. No, you're still expressing something. <laughs> when you and pull your dick out and she pulls her dick out, that's chaos. You're sure, in the belly, belly of the, the beast, beast, and you don't know what to do. I thought that was a more. That's really. obviously a quote that I don't know. When you Jordan pull Peterson. out your dick and she well, pulls out her dick, that's a pickle. Chaos. That's a chaos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had this whole. Bit. God damn you! When your phone hits your eye. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're so, in love. I mean, when I when I think about the. You know, art or dance as an art, I think about ballet because, if we, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, um, ballet was started as as a Get away from as rich people art to form, watch women dance. Well, as as a showcasing dance as its own art form versus attached to uh, another medium like a play, because mm-hmm. musicals existed before ballet did. Yeah. Um, well, and a lot of early dancing was very traditional. Right. It was mm-hmm. it was ceremonial. It was it was a it was a traditional type thing, or it was attached to another form of art. Ballet was a what um, was designed to be. It's showcasing art or dance as its own art form. It's dance opera. So, going by that, would it be unfair to say that fine art is when you showcase that specific style? as its own thing instead of incorporating it into others. You might actually be able to say this. Maybe this helps. Um, we'll see. Fine art is a lot of times art for art's sake. Okay. Um, a lot of times when you're talking about something other than fine art, some art that's other than fine art, it's like commercial art or graphic art. I mean, it's just commercial art. Yeah, it's like entertainment or some or some other thing. But with fine art, it's art for the sake of the thing that you're doing, which is art. So I have a a fun definition. Fine arts is a broad category of art that involves work created for aesthetic value and beauty rather than functional value. Do any does anyone here know anything about the tango? I just I know about hotel tango and they make some damn fine spirits. Told you they do. One two three. Yes, they did. They are exemplars of the distiller's art. So whereas ballet was formed in like high society like Europe. Or wherever London specifically London uh, to showcase the arts and look what dance could be. Was it really? The tango mm-hmm. was developed in Buenos Aires, in brothels, mm-hmm. in like LG, LGBT community. It was like an expression. They, what they did is they took they took the Spanish tango, a light spirited variety of flamenco, and merged it with the milonga, a fast, sensual, and disreputable Argentine dance. So here you have something that is an art form, a form of expression, which has become a very respected, like, there's steps to the tango. Mm. But it started with pulling your dick out. Yes. <laughs> it, no, it did. The same way the music started, what, what, is, what is, like, a lot of, like, early, yeah. you know, it, like, music was, it was, it was sex. Like, it, yeah. was, it was to get people moving for dancing, which leads to, why, why do... Or worship. 
Why do Baptists hate dancing? I, oh, God, I know the it's answer to this. It leads to sex. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. Why do Baptists hate sex? Just, it leads to dancing. I fucked that up. Footloose. <laughs> well, avocado. Out. I'm silenced for the next minute. We actually kind of wandered back into my territory because I see that happen a lot in. We were walking backwards if that happened. <laughs> no, no. You're failing <laughs> into the dark somewhere. forest. <laughs> yeah. You... Okay, no, no. I'm sorry. The sun has once again set. <laughs> On my Six asshole. Is not <laughs> I'm not. Uh, it's like I I'm in the penalty seen... box for longer. Well, here's the th it's like I've seen artists in my particular sphere who are legitimately better in every single, like, technical sense than people who are actually em employed by Marvel, DC, or other, like, publishing houses. Mm -hmm. But all they do is draw naked people. That's because when the sun goes down on your sphere, your butt is facing the horizon. It's a <laughs> I should, see, I'm not sure you left. You dropped well, enough breadcrumbs. That's a Buddhist cone that I just invented. I, well, I think part of it is also the nepotism of people watching in, with influence. Crochet that sentence. Uh, yeah, if a I, man draws hentai in the woods. I talked about that a little bit when yeah. Dave. If an ass posted, claps in the woods, is anybody around to hear? Like, a question about why are there not more people of uh, um, work like quality? working in yeah. these places that are writing stories like after seeing so many of your students write up oh, and that's what i had posted that like i think game. that um, it's, that's because it's the nepotism a little bit it's uh, yeah. the finding friends who networking. are good enough yeah yeah it's the, the networking of the people in charge that are like i know a friend that's really good at this why don't i go ahead and hire this person because they're good enough Mm -hmm. And funny enough, not long after you posted that, I had another friend that who is in charge of a um, board game company that was complaining almost about the same thing, that mm -hmm. these people who are in charge of a, the like games in their industry started out as a very garage shop business. Yeah. And then hired people that were their friends that they knew that would probably start for not much money. That's how the... Right. And then they never learned out. how to be managers. They never learned how to network on a broad scale basis. They just networked with their friends. It's because There's they a only couple of things with that too. Like, like, so you said that, and I don't know if I commented on it. My first thought was, yeah, that's true. But my, I, like, I was piggybacking off of that thinking... Well, but what I'm saying, though, is, like, if there are so many artists this good, you would think even the ones that are getting jobs, n like, through nepotism would give us at least some, like, more good writers and shit. But they're blocked the by the people on top. They have the I've ideas, that, but like, people on top though. are like, well, you're going too far. Hmm. That's not what we need. That costs more. Well, okay. And yeah, the that's... long scene, that, that, the scene you're describing is going Blinding. to cost more than the five-minute summary mm -hmm. that you're three episode arc you just described would sum up and that's what it's like it's the money aspect of art and the nepotism and those two combined it's like what frank zappa really said. puts a glass ceiling as they say on the what art can achieve in mm -hmm. the mainstream world what did frank zappa say well frank zappa was talking about like how back in the 70s they had like the, the the music managers were like these you know fat cat cigar smoking dudes who didn't really know anything about music but because they didn't know anything about music they just like kind of let people do like they were just throwing money and like make something make something and then like he was like yeah that we thought there were these fat cat dudes back then but now we've got these people that like graduated from college and like music and they think they know what they're doing but they don't know music at all like no. they know they they know at best they know it academically and so now they've got their fingers in everything and now because they have their fingers in everything like you've got a convergence of acceptable things to do in music well, like they're, they they're building it. like all these new rules for it and you know his thing was like I, I preferred it back when we had the fat cats that didn't know what the fuck they were doing and let people do it it's I listen to this podcast with these two writers the writers in Hollywood and they're talking about how like the reason why all these shows and these movies become bland is because, like, you know, Hollywood started with people who went out there to, like, they... Get away from Thomas Edison. Yeah, well, Thomas, yeah, exactly. That, that was and the reason. Birth of the nation. Yeah, and... Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, <yeah. laughs> I went out there for a lot of reasons. DW, DW, oh, was it 
Yeah, but once it became commercialized and once it became a success, and this happens in every industry, in every company, in every business, they start to hire from the Ivy Leagues, hire from the top. Yeah. And that and those Cal Arts. Yeah. Like when I think of like the like of course, if you're gonna end up in like a symphony orchestra, you're gonna need like a classical degree, you've been trained since you were a kid. But think about the best music that you ever heard. Or I mean not like classical music, but like just your, your favorite music. Do you think any did Brian Wilson go to Harvard? No, 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 no. My, my favorite Cardi, musicians are Swedish. So. Swedish, yeah. Like fuck all of they, they. We need to change the standards. Like it shouldn't be about this on paper qualification. Like there should be like with jobs or like or like well, you take a test. You know, like to see how. Um, the um, test used to be like you know the trial by fire thing. Like, do people like you? Like a lot of my favorite bands, they they came up through some place. Like they, like Dave Matthews was a bartender in Char Charlottesville. Yeah, yeah, and he met his bandmates playing at Miller's. Yeah, and they and they he was bartending for them. When yeah, they were looking for a singer. Yeah. So I listened to the the Black Keys talk about their come up, and so they realized at one point the dudes is standing in the back of the room with their arms crossed were like judging them the hardest when they were getting more and more successful and they were like mad about it because these guys are hating on what they're trying to create but then when they started to get bigger and bigger those were the guys well even though they were saying critical things to them were their truest fans yeah. because everyone else didn't know them from their beginning and then they liked the mainstream shit and then these people were just like like what the fuck happened man like you know it's just like i want you to be good i, I don't want you to like me yeah okay Really simplifying this, sure. uh, Josie and the per Pussycats movie. Uh, with uh, the, like, the new, the, the Rachel Lee Cook. We're the ones that like yeah. soak with you. You need to listen to us, but no, because these other people say these are the good ones. We landed, you know, like and just like again, super simplifying it because a lot of your names don't make sense to me. Um, we landed <laughs> in a Metallica concert, and luckily I knew the words to Enter Sandman. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that we, that was Carrie Elwes. Yes, yes. Everyone yeah, always talks about what the hell happened to him. He well, he's he's like, this is off it's topic. It's also a he. I'm but, learning new things. Yes. Carrie Elwes, Princess Bride. Yeah, <gasps> oh, yeah. I know the, Mary, that person. the main guy from the yeah. Princess Bride. And okay. he was in the first song. Oh movie. no, he was in a new movie recently. Yeah, he started doing stuff again. The, uh, he's got like crippling self consciousness. He was he was a villain in a movie. Uh, we can be uh, off topic for a minute. It's only the three of us. Even though we're oh. the ones who know the most about art, <laughs> apparently. So we should. I, grabbed, be though, I almost grabbed the wrong phone. <laughs> <laughs> Start messing with it. Yeah, uh, there was a new movie because I watch a lot of kids' movies with mm -hmm. my kids and. He was a villain in this movie, and it was fantastic. Oh, it's not a new movie. It's Ella Enchanted. I just oh, okay. refused to watch it for 20 years because oh. <laughs> I read the book God, and saw the commercial and hated it immediately. But it was okay. It was okay, and he was the villain in it. So Ella Enchanted, not art? No, I'm not saying that. I well, actually art? told my daughter, it is good in a completely different way than the book is. Here's but another is question. Here's another no, question um, along those oh, lines. Ooh. Does art have to be good to be called art? No, no I don't not. think it does. No. Oh, so fine art is meant to be judged for its beauty and meaningful meaningfulness. Mm -hmm. Like that is the that whatever page I just pulled up. That's, that's what fair. it says. That it is meant to be judged What's the by source? its beauty and meaningfulness. <laughs> beauty that's what I just said. Difference com. between dot info. Dot info. See, that's how you know. Dot they're... info. Obviously, oh. it's true. No, okay. I'm kidding. That, like, I just pulled up a random page. You are serious shit right now. <laughs> I know. It's so, dot info. Well, I have a second to think on the <laughs> on the toilet. It occurred to me we, you guys started addressing the economic side. I was going to get into that. <laughs> things that that damage art, but there's one big elephant in the room that needs to be Look let out of the lot and shot in the head. Was the elephant painted by Dolly? No. Because I can picture it. Because <laughs> No, because then it would be more like a giraffe on very stilts. very tall, yes. Yeah. Or like an elephant on giraffe legs? Yes. You know, with a very limp trunk to suggest... Or trunk a, to a giraffe suggest on stilts his, would be His really fear of tall. impidence and probably a piece of Are bread somewhere. Are we going in here? But it's... What really fucks... Freudian. What really fucks up art are moral busybodies. Now, that doesn't have to be religious. You can have somebody From who... censorship? Yes. 
you you have people who are like, oh, this could be damaging to the children. It's always the children, of course. Someone yeah. please think of the children. Yeah, I'll paint your chapel. So to kind of paint a bunch of dicks. Kind of go into the commercial <laughs> side of things, and and commercial side of fine art. You said earlier, Matt, that people don't buy things they don't like as far as artwork. Um, well, some not, people do. I'm not sure that's true because yeah. over the past uh, several decades, um, camp your 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 billionaires and um, high high wealth people have been using art and purchasing art as a store of value yep. hmm. to avoid taxes. Yep. But I would say in that oh. context, it it's not the art isn't it's. Not about it being art; it's about being valued as an object. It doesn't matter its intrinsic artistic value. You really want to say she's got, oh, she, she, okay. she really I do. needs to take an art dump. <laughs> ah, right, art dump. So, she's an and art I was also artist. using take that moment to uh, open a beer. I was going to say something uh, a minute ago, and I can't remember. Well, now you got to wait. It's her turn. Go for it. Well, I would be remiss. She rarely ever jumps up. Like I've that. half uh, half been watching Ozarks. I guess. Art is actually a big way people are laundering money nowadays. Yes. Yes. Pretending this artwork exists. Or maybe like someone just painted a piece of art and then pretending that this piece of art is worth a million, like I, $1.5 million, couple, million dollars, and then they sell it, I, and then they NFTs? sell it, and then NFTs. they sell it. I met a couple. <laughs> NFTs, too. I met a couple um, that they like certain artists, so they buy up their artwork, and then use. they try to like build value on like eBay. Like, people, like, trying to build value on artists. Oh, well, I'm talking about just, like, laundering money. Like, this art piece I'm maybe just does about not exist. Money. <laughs> like, it maybe doesn't even exist. But, like, yeah. because of no, how it's... fluid the, the money market is for art, like, I could paint something today and someone would be like, I think that's worth a million dollars. And I'm about, like, well, that's it's... really generous, but I can't tell you you're wrong. So I thought about sure. taking a dump on a canvas it's, with my it's... butt cheeks pressed to it and see if I could sell that. You should do that. <laughs> well, it's, it's, like it. venture, <laughs> it's, it's like venture <laughs> capitalist you. investors playing the role of, of, of like uh, art manager. Where they're, mm -hmm. like, they're buying up this art and then they're trying to like build up a, like a demand for it in, yeah. in the market so that it's worth more than it's worth. Or just selling it to themselves. Well, have you ever have you ever yeah. heard artists talk about like the, like artists that are worth the, that their artworks are worth millions of dollars? Mm -hmm. Most of those artists have only made like forty or fifty thousand dollars off those. And then like the like one that just an art really? a piece of artwork just sold at was it Sotheby's? Mm -hmm. That's always mm -hmm. Sotheby's for like the most money ever, like millions and millions of dollars. And they interviewed the artist on NPR, and she was just like. Yeah, I, I. They bought that for me for a thousand dollars. I maybe I maybe made a couple. I made like forty. I mean, they make like forty to sixty thousand dollars, or like a couple hundred thousand dollars in their careers. Mm -hmm. And then these people buy and sell their art, and they determine the value, or it becomes valuable for different reasons, like. And I think digitally, it's, it, it's almost a little market. different. Like when you're talking about a a, a web comic or a TV mm -hmm. show or something like that, you can add the stipulations into the contracts of selling these things that. Okay, whatever is comes from this, I get this. Mm -hmm. But when you're making just a painting, like uh, like the the, co Disney the beautiful coasters we're using today, this is this. If I decide to resell it for five hundred dollars, I get to keep the five hundred dollars. The original artist makes nothing, mm -hmm. and that is something that is is very unbalanced. Well, so buying in and selling art arts. is not art; it's commerce. Right, yes. and what they're doing is they're they're taking like, the, 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 what happened, and this sucks because it reminds me of the writer strike, because what happens is that at a certain point people who want to wanted to invest in art discovered that the art doesn't have to be good, mm. it has nothing to do with good. It's a, it's a, it's a field that's so subjective that all it needs to do is be be valued. To be invest in anything doesn't thing. need to be good. Look at Punch Drug Love with those fucking yogurt cups. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you know they they as long as they can get people to want it, it has nothing to do with whether or not the art's good. That's all that matters. So they don't have to go out and look for good artists. So they, our next so when, and the reason I'm bringing the, the, <laughs> the reason I'm bringing that up is because of what what Colorful said, where it's like, well, you know, they they the, these people like they're not they don't have to go out and look for good artists anymore. They don't have to do those things. Hmm. So if there's an artist that doesn't want to you know deal with being only paid three thousand dollars for something these these assholes are, are are you know valuing it fifty sixty grand, if not more than that or millions of dollars, they don't have to even go with those people. If they say no, it's like, well, okay, fuck you, I'll find somebody else. I can make their art seem valuable and I can who wants to do it and who's willing to make that kind of crap money and that's it. 
Because I would say, like, if someone offered me $3,000 for something that I did, oh, I'd take that in a heartbeat and be like, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Would I be pissed in 10 years mm-hmm. when I realized it sold for $300,000? Hell yes. Mm-hmm. But I would absolutely take that $3,000 <laughs> right now. Well, you're also talking about does art need to be performative? I watched this documentary recently called The Alpinist about this free solo climber from Canada who was this nobody who, who like moved to this climbing town. There's this big rock wall behind this town where all these hike, these climbers would congregate in this town, this big climbing community mm-hmm. town. And this world famous rock climber found out that this random kid in Canada bashed his record for climbing this rock face. And no one knew who he was. And so this documentary team starts investigating and they start interviewing people and asking about him and they finally meet him. And he's like somehow gone from being like a homeless kid to being like one of the best climbers in the world and they're trying to get him to like they're trying to film him as he climbs so they can watch it and do these things and he starts to disappear they can't find him anywhere he, and they see that he's showing up in different parts of the world like on instagram social media with other mm-hmm. climbers and he's he so, loves climbing so much that he said to be filmed on a, a solo climb especially like a, a one place i've never been before robs me of the experience of, of being alone mm. so this is a tr- true artist he's climbing the mountain like why make a song some of the best songs in history some of the best art in history why make it you're not making it to sell it or at least are you not necessarily true now when i was going to school uh, our teacher uh, beth likens had this uh, this this thing that she would tell us like there are basically two types of artists there are uh there are Let's see if I can remember what it was. Starring ones, there are well, paid ones. Well, there are there are whores ones and dead ones. <laughs> there are whores and there are masturbators. <laughs> ah, that's good. I read a. That's really good. There are like, people who do art for other people, and there are people who do art for themselves. Uh, I, I was gonna <laughs> say there's people who do art for money. Yeah. And there's people who do it for themselves. So I, I read this. No. Well, just because you're doing it for other people doesn't mean you're necessarily. I doing know, it but for like money, that's right? how I took it. Because I am a whore it. as an artist. Like I. I like to You have, heard it here, folks. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. I like and it's not really for the money. I don't honestly don't care about the money. It's 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 about having people engage in the story that I'm telling and having them think and feel something, like to engage with it that way, you know, like that's the goal. So to answer what you said, real quick I'm sorry. Oh go ahead. So I read this book about poetry and it was it was a book of poetry and it was all like dark, visceral I can't remember what it was called. Mm-hmm. But there was one poem in there by this guy, it was called uh, a, it was a poem to writers. And it was all his different stuff, but the two lines I remember the most was one was, the one line was, um, if you can't make it fuck, don't masturbate it. <clears throat> and the other line was, Whoa. if you're going to speak of pussy, put some hair on it. <laughs> and I think what he meant was, <laughs> if you can't have the real thing, don't try to simulate it. Right. And if you're going to talk about something real and beautiful, or if you're going to talk about something beautiful, make it real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. suddenly I feel like how many conversations have we had about like genuine, genuine, genuineness and authenticity, like in anything that you do? Yeah, in our conversations, like fuck. <laughs> they do. With and I, on. I think that your statement, what about that teacher said? Yeah, you know, you're either a whore or a masturbator. There is an in between. Because while it's like most of the things that I end up doing, they're called fluffers. I mean, like, <laughs> if you if you look at my, like I, I absentmindedly <laughs> draw all the time. If I have a pen in my hand and I'm listening to people, I am just like doodling all across. Like it means as nothing. You've been doing as, all as she That's what I'm literally saying. Like, as, like look, the like page. there's just doodles all over my page. There's like five words and like a million doodles. Um, it's but a lot I of really do enjoy, huh? But yes, yeah. yes, that's <laughs> that's, that's what of it Ed is. McMahon, I'm the really. Um, <laughs> it looks like a grotesque. But I do enjoy. <laughs> it's I, I do enjoy the challenge of making something. That's not how I would draw. Enjoy Dragon like Dragon. for our like for our Secret Santa. I'm making the star. I made the Stargate, which I thought the challenge of doing that. Hmm. Was so much fun, even though, like, mm-hmm. I almost quit ten times, mm-hmm. thinking, like, this is never going to work, like, I can't get this to work. Same with the Perler Beads, with the Enterprise the year before. Um, so I will do things for other people, 
but for the most part, it's like an absent-minded, I'm just going to sit here and, like, draw stuff out mm. of, like, anxiety and to, like, have something to do. So, so um, you're, you're saying that the, the third group is, I'm doing it for other people, but... Almost, specifically one person. And I'm not I'm not doing it for for any any personal gain. Right, I'm not uh, the only thing I'm gaining from it is the satisfaction that they thought it was cool. I may have that thought that about one person was like, "Okay, I like like I could I enjoy this as a the thing that it's meant to be." Okay, so you got 3. You got whores, masturbators, and sluts. Possibly thought of a fourth. Yeah, one. that's a good one. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. I've I've possibly thought of a, of a fourth one. The Sorry, rapist. Sorry, darling. Ooh. <laughs> Basically, someone who creates art to harm other people. Ooh, yeah, that's and also force a it thing. upon them. So that yes. would be that would be piss Christ. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the dick pic. That is the that's dick pic. The unsolicited the dick pic. Yeah. So so Done. Are, are I've you, received one of those. Well, you gotta, you gotta think, most, okay, wait, as a photographer. Sorry, I just, as a woman, I really enjoy it when I hear a guy saying that he got, got an dick unsolicited pics. dick pic. I have also gotten unsolicited dick pics. Uh, yeah. But I've never I, given or received If you've never given one, you didn't deserve it, like, uh, if you've given Has one. Any, I've had a moment where I tried to be that person. May God have mercy on your soul. Okay, to be so I don't even know how often women actually solicit dick pics. It's never. strange. I was going to say, it's a very strange Almost practice ever. to me. Almost ever. I, like, there's it, it never, does but happen. I have heard someone I actually ask for it, but almost never. One, my, one of my former, not relationships, but a, a girl that I used to hook up with was a daughter of very rich parents who put her up in nice apartments, and mm. she was a lot of fun, and there was a, a, a it was around the time of the movie Alicia Frozen. Oh. <laughs> around the time <laughs> of the movie Frozen. No, 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 because I remember this because uh, she liked uh, cocaine. And there was a. Uh, <laughs> do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> do you want to do some coke, man? Yeah, she would literally. We, do you want to do some coke, we, man? We worked in a in a high class like club bar downtown, and she would like lure me into the bathroom. I was powerless. Um, but she hit it's me up. All that cocaine. Hundred percent. Cocaine health. Okay. Cocaine anyway, strength. she was hot. Her parents were rich. She liked coke. She gave me coke. Anyway, she was an artist, and so a couple years after knowing her very well. She hit me up and was like... In the biblical sense. <laughs> she, she hit me up and she goes, I'm doing an art series. Can you send me some pictures of your penis? Because I'm painting portraits of the dicks of the men that I've been with. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I don't even want to think about like going to people and being like, Hey, P.S. I'm painting your dick. Whether you want me to or not, will you send me a picture of it so that I, I can, can represent it? can remember how it? my dick looked. So I can we, represent it as accurately. Someone who's seen it, I remember how your dick looked. Yeah, but she got it from behind most of the time. Uh -huh. now, while I, now, while I brought it up. As far as I know, I was always facing it. Yeah, well. <laughs> I checked out. Okay, while, while I brought this out. whole idea of the art rapist up, I have, actu I have actually learned... New, new film, The Art Rapist, as, yes. uh, pro uh, premiering at Cannes. <laughs> I'm go to the Keystone Art Cinema to see that. It's an art gallery that people just run out screaming. Oh, Sorry, directed, go ahead. Who directed The Pianist again? I don't remember who directed The Pianist. But cut! You have a you have an I point, and it. I want you. It, it was Roman Polanski. Yeah. Oh, it was he's going to direct the art rapist? Oh, <laughs> oh my, god. my god! Oh god! <laughs> Is he going to do it while sitting in a jacuzzi? If he okay. doesn't, he's I think doing you, it. Uh, you didn't ask because oh. you didn't know who directed the pianist. I think you knew that going in, and you just wanted everyone else to realize so say, it. Roman Polanski. <laughs> Did you Manson us into Sharon Tatum? <laughs> Uh, Did you mention okay. us into Sharon Tating this podcast? Okay, you so, I up. think this podcast is all about derailing. I think okay, art is so, such a uh, we're probably, we're, raw we're definition. We're probably due for a break, so we're going to... Uh, okay. Hang on, hang on. Let, uh -huh. let, 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 let finish. Let's, let's, yes, let's, yeah. let me finish. This is not the same um, amount of time as left. I've actually had an experience where I realized I cannot be that person. I cannot be the art rapist. Because I tried and was immediately disgusted with myself. <laughs> It you, was like you, you, art art rape. this, you art raped yourself. You art rape attempt. You're an you're a, you're an art attempt rapist. I He's found a piece. I actually found I had a He's soul. He's a repentant art rapist. A repentant art rapist. He's a registered art offender. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So you say on that, that note, uh, going around and painting mustaches. <laughs> I I just moved to this neighborhood and they make really bad art. <laughs> on, on, on that one, we're going to take a quick break for our sponsors and come back and talk about art forgery. Meine Kunden, start your day the alien way with Little Fuel's breakfast cereals. Obermunch keeps a master race marching strong with our brand new whole grain Obermunch. Made with rich honey and 88 essential vitamins and minerals, you can kick the breakfast of champions to the camps and make room for the master grain. Gestapos, looking to suppress dissent at the breakfast table? Avoid the kitchen comp. Please the youth and root out the deviants that object with Gestapos. A healthy breakfast of pacified oats with patriotic marshmallow eagles and an energetic 300 grams of sugar. Buy your trade ration stamps for your box today. Luftwaffels. Britain will soon fall to our aerial campaign. But to further ensure our inevitable victory, fight your compelled support for the brave and glorious Erwin of the Reich with a breakfast booming with flavor. Luftwaffels are the flawless accompaniment to any balanced air war. Crafted with the finest wheat from our stalwart Soviet allies by loving and honorable Aryan mothers. Nothing fortifies you for the day and the national struggle ahead, like little heroes Luftwaffels. Our breakfast offerings also go great with a warm cup of crystal knob. Little Fjord's confectionery. Ein Geschmack. Ein Volk. And we're back. I, I hope you enjoyed and send some money and love to our sponsors. So now we're going to talk about art forgery. Uh, the, the industry is as it exists, as it did exist, as it might exist in the future. Um, specifically, one thing I want to touch on is NFTs. What is a non-fungible token? How has it gotten around? And how can we exploit this? <laughs> well... Can I say I didn't know it was a thing until I heard it on South Park? <laughs> I don't even really know that much of what well, it is, to be honest. I actually have a pretty, very, a very, very simple explanation for what an NFT is. You marry a woman. She very visibly cheats on you, but you still have the marriage certificate. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you create a piece of artwork. You mm -hmm. technically own it, but everyone else can use it pretty much. However they want. Yeah. Okay. So what's the point? There isn't. That's the question. Okay. That comes up a lot. They stole my apes, Odo. <laughs> my favorite one has been the, the the meme from Casino Royale, where you you've got Lashif sitting across from from Bond, How and he's like, it "Seems your uh, your NFTs were, <laughs> <laughs> your NFTs were quite fungible." Your NFTs were quite fungible, Mister Bond. The my favorite just on that meme is uh, Bond and Lashif mm -hmm. sitting across from each other and. Cow, Mr. Bond? <laughs> well, my boys used to jump and end up in your gun line. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, just replacing the poker game with just about any with, other game. With 40K, yeah, specifically. That, yeah. It's like they've been been—they've already been at this for like six hours. <laughs> um, you now draw 25 cards. So, art forgery. The thing that I, I kind of can't wrap my head around is... How? W w w I mean, I, I get... That you're trying to copy another piece of art to to pass it off as the original, mm -hmm. but I figure the most valuable pieces of artwork, you already know where they are and who owns them. Right. So well, the thing with we do now. The thing with uh, with with forgeries, though, uh, generally speaking, the most valuable forgeries are the ones like these are people who have gotten really really good at mimicking particular like really famous artist styles, mm -hmm. and then. A lot of times, will create new uh, paintings in that style, or will create uh, rumored paintings or rare paintings that haven't been seen or they like like in a long time, and then pass them off as this is the missing Picasso or something like so, that. So, and I also believe that like sometimes they say like, oh, this was stolen. Like that, the one they have there is not the real one. Yeah. This, this is, is the rumored stolen uh, original Mon uh, Mona Lisa. Like, you know, mm. it was rumored that it was stolen because I started that rumor. Mm. You know, like, <laughs> oh, that's, I started that's that rumor a year and a half ago, but like... I see, I was going to bring up pastiche, mm. but then you had to quote the fucking situation like Hunter S. Thompson. So I... 
funny thing, I don't know at all what you're talking about. I didn't figure she did. Hunter S. Thompson was a, a writer. I know, I know. He did stuff. I know that. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> he's not here. Movies, so, right? You're not wrong. So he was a writer who became a journalist, and in journalism, it's supposed to be objective, right? Well, he started doing something which was he dubbed Gonzo journalism, where he insert himself in the story, right? Mm -hmm. The first Gonzo piece of journalism was the Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved. Talk about <laughs> art, and and the person that was he was supposed to go, he was I forget what magazine he was supposed to go cover the Kentucky Derby mm -hmm. from a sports perspective, yeah. and they hire this young impressionable artist from England named Ralph Steadman. <laughs> and if you are aware of Ralph Steadman's work, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am oh, not. Do tell. Google Google Ralph Steadman right now. If you're listening to this, Google Ralph Steadman. And and you'll see where this is going because young pa pause for just a second. Oh, so. you, you can continue to Google. I'm just gonna. So what happened was this young kid from England who's an artist get, gets off the plane. Hunter S. Thompson, which you're gonna have to Google him too, picks him up and doses him on LSD. And so then, he's known for caricatures. And then goes to the Kentucky Derby, and, and Hunter S. Thompson is from not only Kentucky, Louisville. Mm -hmm. Hunter Simpson is from Louisville, so he knows the town, and he's uh, like, he's like, I'm not gonna cover this fucking horse race. I'm gonna cover this fucking horse race, <laughs> and and instead of like looking at the horses, he starts looking at the people, and he's he's describing these like drunk ass Kentucky colonels dressed to the nineties, puking all over themselves because they're so drunk, and everyone's dressed up, and they're all fucking. It's all just decadence and and high society, just getting fucked up. Puking on the Ritz. In places where <laughs> poor people aren't allowed. And and so and they're also on drugs while they're doing this. And so then after they leave after they after they leave they, they leave the Kentucky Derby and they go to the Pendennis Club. Do you know what the Pendennis Club is famous that for? One I don't know, no. The origin of the old fashioned. Ooh. Oh. The Pendennis Club is such an old bar in Louisville. It was the rumor I so the old fashioned that. was probably created in New York. Like the Manhattan yeah, was. Yeah, I heard that. Most other cocktails were created in San Francisco during the Gold Rush. Mm. That's a topic for another kind, another day. But um, the old fashioned, so old whiskey before it was more refined, it was was good. <laughs> so they would like cut it with water, and then later mm. with fruit when they had access Bitters. to it. Bitters. Bitters. And so this had been going on for like as long as whiskey was a thing. Mm -hmm. You know. If you know anything about whiskey, the whiskey rebellion with George Washington, that's a whole nother fucking conversation. Mm -hmm. So, this is a con confederate... Because this wasn't ball. bourbon, it was... So the rumor whiskey. about the P Pendennis Club was there was a confederate general who asked the bartender for a cocktail, and the bartender made a the old-fashioned. The, this whiskey with... What is, what is it, old-fashioned, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, 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 I, was thinking, I was thinking. For the I, as a who, bartender here, I will say uh, it is bitters and muddled cherry usually, and uh, cherry. orange. Wait, did you say uh, you're the well, only it's, bartender? It's no, I said as a bartender, as a bartender, bartender okay. here. Sorry, I was thinking. Who works professionally as a bartender? It's, it's yeah. bourbon with Angostura bitters. Yeah. Which also comes from Argentina. Muddled with sugar. sugar. Usually muddled sugar, 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 or demerara. Orange, orange bitters. Or demerara, which is or simple syrup. Simple syrup is half Maybe sugar, half water. Demerara is half raw sugar, or is it brown sugar? I think it's raw. I usually, I always thought it was raw. Yeah, so demerara is raw sugar, so it's a little brown. Just rely on the wisdom of the crowd here. And then citrus, which is usually orange, sometimes cherry, not always. Well, it's usually well, with old the fashion, with a traditional old fashion, it yeah. is orange, cherry, sugar in some form or fashion and bitters. In like, one uh, way. Mixed Sometimes together. Muddled, you can mix it yeah. in different ways. Sometimes then, the orange with the bitters. cherry could be with the bitters. Sometimes not. You stir it up because like whiskey it does bitters. not do well shaken. Hmm. Um, yeah. The, like, so there, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but that is the basics of it is orange, cherry, sugar. So the old fashioned is one of the oldest cocktails in the book. Mm. And it was created at the Pendennis Club in Louisville, Kentucky, where Hunter S. Thompson was from. He doses this English artist, goes to the Kentucky Derby, 
And they're getting fucked up the whole time. And then they go to the Pendennis Club, which you have to have like a membership to get in. Mm -hmm. And it's That's all a club. It's it's the club where the old fashion was invented. It's old as fuck, and it's got storied history, and there's all these rich people. And he's just describing these Kentucky Colonels dressed like fucking KFC, dude, mm -hmm. but like puking on themselves and drunk as shit. And the, the the piece is amazing. So Gonzo journalism was instead of covering the piece, I'm going to put myself in the piece. But still cover it, mm -hmm. and so what he did—he was on a television. An angle you don't expect. He was on a television show in the '70s, and so this goes into that what you said about the, I created I, the rumor. Yeah. I created the rumor. So what happened is, is that there was a senator that was running, and he didn't agree with the senator's politics, and he reported that there was a rumor that the senator was addicted to Ibogaine, <laughs> and the, he's on this television show, and the interviewer is asking him, now, now tell me more about that. He goes, well. I could report on the rumor because I started the rumor. <laughs> <laughs> As he reaches into his 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 tube sock to get his cigarettes. Oh, you can find video. There's a BBC documentary of him in the '70s where you can that you literally they hold up a sheet so that he can do a line of cocaine behind the sheet, and then his his neighbor and him in Colorado, in the middle of America. His, his neighbor and him have a dispute because his neighbor's cow is getting on land. They're shooting at each other yeah. Yeah. on camera, back and forth. <laughs> and as, he, as he's, he, he, he's got this huge fucking magnum and he's reaching around the corner and, and firing off a couple shots and he turns back to the camera and he's just like, this is how Americans used to settle their conflicts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it was worse than that. I, okay, better than that, really. Um, it was an owl rat? So he was using better. a Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum. That was you know this story! Oh, okay. I yes. watched the video. Of course I know this. He's right. very and, excited. And he's, he's shooting at his neighbor, and he's like, well, he, I shoot at him, he shoots at me, we shoot back, and it's this is the American way. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Good on you. He's, yeah, he's, wow. As he's like, like, just as he's reloading. And and reloading. <laughs> okay, that, that, man, that, man's, me. that man's life was art. <laughs> part, like, of the, part of the real tragedy is that on his suicide note, it's he said it never got weird enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> and this concludes our our uh, a la carte episode on Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this like, is mini, this is our mini as show interesting on as on Hunter S. Thompson is as an artist. So you back. learned about Do Hunter S. Thompson. We digress. The Pendennis Club. As I said. The old fashioned. As the only person here who has gone as Hunter S. Thompson is for art. Halloween on three separate occasions. They're all fucking art. I think the old fashioned. Oh, I was about to apologize yes. because I work for a company who makes a, an old fashioned as like a. A premix like, cocktail? No, 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 them? no. Okay. Oh so god, premix. <laughs> I got a little. That's yeah, true. you got. I was triggered. No. I got triggered there. I, avocado. I also, oh, avocado. Yes. Me. Also a bartender we have at a bourbon, bourbon bars. Oh, it, I work for Hughes Culinary. Elmo, we have a pop old plan. fashioned, <laughs> which plan. is Knob Creek Rye, orange, mm. uh, orange and cherry muddled, but it's a Luxardo cherry. Very specifically, we don't even carry maraschino cherries. Looks like it's better. Mean the ones and that... then the uh, we use an orange bitters. I forget what the name is. Do you flame but... the orange? No. Just like though. Now that I'm thinking about it, we could because we do use the burner for. You don't rosemary. need a burner. You just need a lighter. I know, but like if, the burner. If more you're fun, talking about making, if you're talking about making a hundred old fashions a night, you need a burner, not a lighter. Okay, this is the last thing I'll say. As a person who lives in Kentucky, whose grandparents are from Kentucky, and can now speak for everyone in Kentucky, we're at, flex. As as <laughs> as the spokesman for Kentucky, I stroke my beard in. Uh, as Matthew Frank Gamble, the spokesman for Kentucky, I'm saying that the old fashioned needs to be a bourbon centric drink. We used to use Old Granddad. It is rye. I will say that so it that's is a rye. rye. Old it's not a bourbon old fashioned. That's what I like. That is my like I one finger rye. up as far as it, it is a rye old fashioned. But actually, if you ask for an old fashioned, like if you ask for just like a Woodford Reserve old fashioned, that's the same way we're gonna give it to you. So I worked in a bourbon bar where behind me Nick, were I'm sorry, I had to break what I was gonna say. Oh, over three hundred bourbons behind me, and this rich old white lady comes in, and she's just like. Which oh, one do you right. drink? And I was like, lady, I'm a bartender. I drink oh, Kentucky oh, Tavern. <laughs> oh, lady, I we, drink whatever they let me something, drink. Something special? See, I, 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 I have yeah. 
I drink the bourbon that they let me drink. Sometimes I drink, I get a tiny taste of the $200 bourbon behind the bar, and sometimes I get a little taste of the $10 bourbon behind the bar. <laughs> the, I drink what they let me. The best one I ever had, I, I worked at Bouquet in Covington. And it's a farm-to-table restaurant. With the, it started out as a wine bar and then became a bourbon-centric bar because my friend built the bourbon. They, when I worked there, they had over 200 bourbons. And uh, one night, we were getting our asses kicked on a Saturday. And after everyone was gone, the owner walked up and with a bottle. And he poured out a couple shots for me and a couple other people. And it was Elijah Craig, 23 years. Mm. <laughs> I could not that tell you what nice. it tasted like to this day. But that is the <laughs> best bourbon that I have ever had. So Elijah Craig is my, what is what uh, Thunderbird used to have bonded. The, the best thing bonded. that's happened to me in my yeah, career is working bourbon. for Hughes Culinary. It has been, hands down, the best step I've ever made. So, so they own... as art. Yes. Well, bourbon is an art. <laughs> Well, just yeah, to yeah, finally get us back around everything to Everything is art. Bartending is We said this at the art. very beginning. In now, general, bartending is, it is an art. You, you is are it forged? making... No, how is it forged? Hang on, guys. <laughs> how do you forge so, bourbon? Well, I mean, you that... There is a very specific recipe for forging bourbon. It has to be a very specific amount. But uh, I think bartending in general is an art because you are combining these things now it is as you were talking about dave the different types of you know whore we decided to add a third ca category yes. whore slut or uh masturbator um i think whore is definitely the term for bartending mm. you want yes. other people to enjoy it Real you are very no, rarely geez. making something just for yourself yeah um, are you or still, just are you a bartender if you're also, making it for yourself? Also, do you notice that they always hire attractive yeah, bartenders? True. Bartenders are always attractive? Because yeah. you make better tips, the bar makes more money if you are attractive. I know this. It's if not I don't, the... I'm going to say this for a fact. I have served Speaking for 16 years. I have served or bartended. I make more money when I wear makeup than when I don't. Why do you think that is? Ask yourself this question, audience. Are you hot enough to bartend? And that's why I don't do. It, I can't do it professionally. <laughs> there I are many guys who are bartenders that do well, but I'm saying as a woman, you cannot yeah. bartend and be ugly. Like that's just not for the arbitrators. I thing. I personally look like a fat Lemmy Kilmister. That's kind of what I am. And I will say right now, any woman who wants to argue with me, like I'm a bartender and I'm not, bar you're lying to yourself. You are attractive in your own way. See your own worth. They're always this is chubby an empowering chasers. movement, not like taking away from anyone. All right, we have gone completely anyway. off the rails. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. We yeah. are I tried to so bring us far back off the rails. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. One of the things you guys got to remember We're here. We're our moderator. Hang on. We are. He'll be back, but one of the things you guys got to remember is that we're like when you're in the situation just talking to each other you don't realize how unbelievably difficult it is to follow along when people are talking over each other when you go back and you listen to this there are going to be points where you're just like what the hell is anybody saying so just be aware of that I'm, as you I'm start very aware like, of that. I I actually study, talking over each other i actually studied a little bit of this in yeah. college too Attempting, uh, I apologize. Well, no, it's fine to like talk. Just when it, when you want to avoid as much as much as you can avoid it's talking distortion. over, because Bourbon. we can hear each other a lot better than they can hear any one person speaking when everybody's speaking. But if they rewind Correct. it, they can hear. This is why actually you can't. Wow, you really can't. You it's it's it. literally I, just like a wall of sound when people start talking over each other. When you have really good microphones, you can hear everything. Well, yeah. Uh, I'll say as like as a bartender i got a little over uh what what do they call it thank you i got a little overzealous because i'm like oh i know this topic yay i said, I said enthusiastic <laughs> um I, I know things ah. about this topic so but um, so i we did to... get very off the rails though we were still in the art making realm i will say yeah, yeah. For but what? nick has something to say or uncle That's right. when That's i said something. uncle rezo uh, thank you uh, yes i'm also called nick I'm also called the Electric Spaniard by people who don't exist. Okay. However, yeah, yeah. it was to get us back on topic, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, how would you go about forging a well-known, high-quality bottle of bourbon? You don't forge bourbon. I mean, now, um, now, I, I you would. Kiln. No, no, no. You distill. You distill bourbon. <laughs> you're and then miss, you age you're it. missing the definition I'm using. Forge. You don't. Forgery. 
just as in oh, an imitation, you know, something you want if, to pass off as a copy. Oh, but you that's are easy. trying to copy. Well, no, okay. See, that's the the problem is that there are laws involved with bourbon, especially bonded bourbon. And yeah. guess what? Forgeries aren't all technically legal, so we're not talking well, about it's, the law. It, it's mix, that would be mixes. I mean, so there's like something called ten high, which is mm -hmm. called a it's it's a. It's a whiskey, technically, but they're trying to pass it off as a bourbon, but they don't actually call it a bourbon. They, just play, it's a they play the whiskey. name. It's a I've whiskey. had it. I puked. It's awful. Um, but I would say, you if you are looking to yeah. basically impersonate a bourbon mm -hmm. as a forgery, you would be looking at almost the exact barrel they are aging their bourbons in, because... Mm -hmm. Bourbons get their flavors from the barrels mm -hmm. they are in. All high proof now, so, too. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, bourbon is, is so specifically, you have to have this percentage of, of rice. Also stuff, corn. Something. I can't, it's corn, thank you. And then this percentage of this, but the You're about barrel the itself. You are looking at the barrel if you want to do a forgery. Sorry, Garrett. So, um, I got two things. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a bourbon, in order to be called a bourbon, has to be um, aged in a never-before-used charred oak barrel. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. For at least two, two years. Yeah. Two, um, as far as passing it off, forging, or making a forgery of a bourbon, you're not going to try and sell that to someone who knows it. No. No, you're 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 going to sell it to someone who has never tasted bourbon or that particular brand of bourbon, and say, yeah, it's the same thing. And I I guess I, I would argue at the end of the day is it's not worth it to do it because you have to buy the same barrel that this other person did. You have to wait the same amount of time in order to legally call it a bourbon. You might as you well have to go legitimate. through it, so many loops in order to make it a forgery that. It's not worth it to mm -hmm. make it a forgery. It'd be, so Sorry, it, you might as well just it, make your it, own bourbon. It, forging art is one thing because you can pass it off. You can, it's passable. But if 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 they regulated art the same way that they regulated bourbon, it would be not impossible, but damn near. So this these are the requirements. It would be profitable. Bourbon must be made of a grain mixture that is at least 51% corn. Mm -hmm. Bourbon must Take be care. distilled to no more than 160 U.S. proof. 80% alcohol by volume. Bourbon must be, must be aged in new charred oak barrels, and bourbon may not be introduced to the barrel at higher than 125 proof. That's 62.5% alcohol by volume. There's there's a science to it, but it's also an art form. So, like, the way... After after you do that... it's it's Well, before you do that, it's the mash bill. It's, it's, it's what you put into the bourbon. So, like, Weller Special has the same mash bill as Pappy Reserve. So a couple years ago, when people started to figure this out, Weller Special's price point went way up because people were like, oh, I can like... In, so with the mash bill, you get the same taste at the onset without the burn at the end. The burn at the end is what you're paying for, and that's what you're aging it for. And so you can take a drink of Weller Special and get the same forward notes as Pappy Van Winkle without paying the, the same price for it. Sorry, I'm just looking at uh, this glass, but you I'm have something to say, and you've had it, so... You could Nick. just chop out parts of this and make it a mini-sode about, like, random facts. I am not going to well, go through the process of listening to almost two hours worth of uh, podcast it's really just, and chop, chop it up. Just Go ahead, Nick. Well, you keep bringing up legal. Legal definitions. I'm What, what I mean by fraud that is... Fraud is inherently... Legal. Yes. But this but right. forgery but going to be is not fraud. Forgery is a well, very is a very technical form of fraud. Yeah. With fraud, you can just convince somebody to like, oh, I got a bridge to sell you. Like uh, oh you wanna buy the Eiffel Tower? Hey kid, you wanna name your somebody after you have to all know forgery, what you're forgery. All forgery I guess, is fraud, not all fraud is forgery. Yeah, all P's are accused of I guess with that I, I get what you're saying. And moreover, all mammals forgery is illegal. Two conversations going on, Speak one for yourself, buddy. Hey. Uh, to Nick's point, forgery is not legal. No. That is true. So, and we're talking about the legal definition of bourbon. But any bourbon drinker who would buy forgery is going to know the difference in taste between bourbon and yeah. whiskey. At that point, they've already bought it, and you disappear. 
It's but they're not gonna buy it. it like uh, if I am a bourbon it. drinker and I am buying it in any quantity that is going to make you any real money, I am tasting it before I buy it. Then you don't sell to that person who would know. No one would though. No, no one, one is going it. to buy a large quantity of product, and I'm even talking about like illegal drugs. Not no well. one is going to buy a huge quantity. Okay, I know Garrett has something to say, but like. I will say then, most reasonable people will not buy a giant quantity of product without tasting it. Now, if you're just looking for color, you could sell them colored water for all you're looking for. But if you're looking for getting close, you might like you're not going to make anything like profit worthy. There, he wants to but, say something. Garrett, let, let say it. They're one of the oldest um, games as far as. Uh, speaking of alcoholic beverages, is a form of forgery. Um, there were, in shipwrecks in the Mediterranean, there ports? were... Ports? Huh? You're talking about ports? No, I'm talking specifically about wine. Was that a maritime joke? The no. The greatest wine in the... in or Considered the best wine in antiquity was Greek wine. And everyone knew Greek wine sold better and commanded higher prices. There were... Dozens of shipwrecks full of, um, what are those things called? Amphoras? Amphoras? Yeah, yeah. amphoras. Mm. Big vases, in essence, that were labeled Greek wine that had Carthaginian wine in it. And it, it was a long enough, get, I mean, there were, these shipwrecks are spaced out hundreds of years. This was going on for a long time. Um... People who had Greek wine were still buying the not Greek wine labeled as Greek wine. So, you will buy, people will buy, even in vast quantities, um, stuff that isn't necessarily um, what, it's, what, it's per, what it is supposed to be. Because if you're going to make the money on it, you might know. You might just play their game back to your customers. Mm-hmm. Like they did. Wine I want to answer your. Bourbon. I want to answer your question. So, what you're talking about is not forgery. You're talking about conning someone for a profit, right? Yeah. So that's what you do with forgery. So, in this market, you wouldn't be able to forge a bourbon. You either make it, or it's not bourbon. So, the way to profit off of people by not doing it the way that bourbon's supposed to be done, there is a way. And that's blended bourbons, blended whiskeys. When I worked at Bouquet, one of the most expensive shots we had was a, it was Kentucky Owl, I think it was what it was called. And it was like... Old s- Kentucky Shark. It was like $70 <laughs> a, sh- uh, a shot. And these people were making so much money, they were talking about making a theme park. But it, I want to go to bourbon land. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but it was literally a blended bourbon. It was just this guy took other bourbons or whiskeys and then made his own whiskey from other whiskeys and then somehow like in art for like in, mm-hmm. in art value and in forgeries it people were just accepted that it was supposed mm-hmm. to be with this so oh why is it that much well people will literally people will come in and ask you what the most expensive bourbons are yeah mm-hmm. it, it, the one of the most expensive shots the money at about. wise guys in 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 uh, otr cincinnati was frank sinatra's jack daniels Choice. Do mm-hmm. you think mm-hmm. that shit's probably really special? No. No. It was five hundred dollars. It was. It was like, and the prices were changed by the week. And they regulate this. The government regulates this. It went from being five hundred dollars a bottle to the next week being two hundred dollars a bottle. It went down three hundred dollars in one fucking week. Well, all this shit's made up. On on creating, being a con man in regards to. Uh, you're basically fucking with someone's perceptions. For money. Yes. But there is an example of... Uh, ever, ever seen that show, Bullshit? You know, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good show. Someone managed to pass off a bottle of, like, bottom shelf hobo wine to somebody as oh, the most expensive episode. wine in the world. They explained to them though. the tasting notes. <laughs> but the thing is, because they're being told this, this is this. You're paying this amount. It suddenly has this perception halo around it that changes. I think this what they I, taste. I think this whole thing might uh, boil down, not necessarily <clears throat> boil down, but 
is important to the discussion between value and worth. Those are different things. Very, very much so. Uh, I think the only thing I have to say with wine is that as someone who has taught wine for a number of years to servers and the like. Can I go to wine school? Sure. I will absolutely go teach you to my wine school. You don't want to know what my number one lesson is, which I was about to tell guess. Remember, you're um, telling not just us, but everyone else who's listening to this. <laughs> All 12 what? of our subscribers. The, um, <laughs> so you know, the whole world's going to know what you've done to wine. <laughs> I know. Bottles. The customer, what they really want to drink, that's the right choice. When they ask you what's going to pair well with a steak, your first question to them is, what do you normally enjoy at home? Because if they like Moscato, if they like crazy sweet Moscato, it does not matter what you tell them is going to pair perfectly with a steak. They don't. They will not like it. When you start, oh, when if they're like, we like, like a little bit of everything, then go ahead and tell <laughs> so, them it's so a Cabernet. The, the thing, I had that one. The thing you learn in serving and bartending is that you cannot, <clears throat> or sales in general, is that you really can't convince someone to buy something. Exactly. You have well, to get them to convince themselves it's their idea. Now the thing is, is was right. certain customers i could that convince too. them that the cabernet is the right deal that's that's what's going to pair well but they won't enjoy it mm -hmm. they will not enjoy their experience with that cab and the next time they come in they will not get wine at all if i want them to enjoy their experience the next time they come on well come in as well as this time i'm going to ask them what they enjoy yeah because if they want a sweet white I'm going to convince them maybe a lighter, like a more drier Riesling than they would normally mm -hmm. go to go with whatever steak they're getting. Because like at that point, it doesn't matter what you're eating. If they don't like it, they're not going to like it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to say one thing and then shift it back to art. So when I, my first serving job, I had the worst dessert sales. And desserts are mostly an upsell in, in mm -hmm. restaurants. And so my manager was just like, You've got to you got to work on this and and somehow so we had it was it was Keystone and Hyde Park we had this skillet cookie and because the skillets are so thick and the cookies whatever it take, they took forever to make right so somehow somebody either told me or I figured out that when you serve them their food they haven't That's eaten yet ask it. so they they haven't eaten yet they haven't paid yet mm -hmm. they're still like hungry. you got to get them to go to the they're grocery still store hungry. Hungry. they're so ready. They they see their food. They're like they're ready, and you and you. It takes, it takes fifteen minutes. You hand the food off. You it's set the food down. Off or thing. You you turn around and you go. Oh, if anybody wanted that cookie, remember that thing take like twenty minutes to bake. So let me know sooner than later. And you go to turn back around, and you hear somebody every fucking time go, cookie, <laughs> and then they would order it or two, and then by the time it came out, they'd be like, oh fuck, like like, but. I had the most dessert sales by the end of that month. I will, I will you also had the most desserts by the end of that month. Bring this back around <laughs> by saying... Good? It was good. It was fucking good. Okay, but it's that a time, cookie it so with cool. ice cream on it. Like, there's you no way to cookie. fuck it up. I don't, okay. but, like, it's you, a cookie with yeah. ice cream on it because that's what people do, and it's delicious. Okay, so... And I, I'm just going to try and bring this back around and say, in a weird way, like, the things that restaurants do with their food and even the way they sell things like desserts and the way they present, like, presenting plates and entrees and their specials, there's a very specific way and it's all about the appeal. The aesthetics. To the guest. The it's, it's the horror, it's the horror classification uh, of Dave's teacher's distinction between it's artists. No place. And I think that that is how we bring this all craziness back around into the art and you can forge all you want that but was a perfect, the original is the original that was a perfect transition i'm going to tell you why because i was going to bring it back to art but then you transitioned it from the service industry to the art and what i'm going to say to you is mise is the presentation yes mise en scène is uh, the theatrical version of that same concept so it's in it's one of the last things you learn in culinary scores so it's one of the last things you perfect because you check the mise. How's the mise? So, like, shit's all ordered, cooked. We don't have well, that problem. Been we had the exterminators the in last oh, week. not good. So, oh, anyway. <laughs> Say, we don't have that problem. We had the exterminators in last week. You're, you're at the, the SA? SA? Is someone thinking of? Anyway. Excuse me? Yeah, uh, SA? <laughs> no, the... Whatever the fuck. The window. So the food Expo. comes... Expo. Expo. Thank you. Expo. That's what I meant. So the food comes through. You <laughs> add the, the sauce or the spice or the whatever. You add the shit and it's got to look 
is it, it we check the meats. It goes on the plate. It's ready to go. So it's fucking art. It's it's beautiful. It's cooked. It's pretty. So now I ask you. We started this whole thing with the whole episode was going to be called "What is Art." And the first thing you ask is "What is Art," and then we started talking about all kinds of fucking things because we all kind of think that everything is art and everything is science. So I think the real question that we've been asking: What is it? What is the value of art? Or what is the what were we, what were we saying? What the what value? What is not art? I don't know. This is your this is your turn. No, we were yeah, asking value, value, value worth. versus yeah. worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the value or worth of art? Value is uh, traditionally defined as uh, what someone will do or pay for something. That mm-hmm. is value. Worth, and I could be wrong about this, is what goes into making it. So why were you asking? So when you were asking the question, what is art, Mm -hmm. how do you define the worth and value of art? We haven't asked you what what is Yeah, because the reason that I haven't asked myself, well, (laughs) I have asked myself. Oh, how the turntables. Oh, how the (laughs) turntables. The reason that I've been asking you guys is, uh, as at least Dave can attest, I have the aesthetic sense of a concussed chimpanzee. We're going to pause and say that all that talk of bourbon caused him to... I had some <laughs> bourbon. I did get some bourbon. <laughs> Threw himself a did glass you of bourbon. Glasses? Oh, no. No, did it's the same glass. Bourbon? Okay. This is my infantry glass. I thought he had a um, pour out of his bourbon glass. Mm. So, so we, it just we, tends we, to be a bullet. No, I have a... The, the glass that I am carrying says on it, I am relentless, I am always there, now and forever. That's part of the infantryman's creed. In the glass is also embedded a 308 caliber uh, bullet. That's beautiful. And I mm. saw that and thought it was a pourer too. Like you were there when I received this. The I want to pick it up by, the, by the, the casing. So no, you don't want to do that. While, while we thought we were derailing the podcast, we were indeed influencing the podcast. Encapsulating, as you will. I will not. You don't have to. <laughs> I refuse. I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to them. Politely, okay. I decline. The 12 <laughs> subscribers. All 12 of them. We're very happy to have them. Me included. <laughs> I think I'm one of them, so I guess all, all 10 of you. <laughs> all 10 of you. subscribers, a couple of them are here <laughs> on the podcast. I just want to say to myself, thank you for listening right now. <laughs> I'm very been, glad been one my, of my husband l- is, you know, deciding to hop on here. You've Please been one like, of my loyalist fans. Subscribe to, uh, and leave a comment. It really helps us with the algorithm. Uh, note, oh. note to self later on, Dave, this is Dave. Um, remember to pick up milk on the way home. <laughs> uh, to, you to always be, need it. To be fair, I managed to get Garrett his first example of online hateful comments. Actually, I am one of the subscribers. Wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think so. Oh, we've too. got five. Are half, <laughs> are half of the <laughs> subscribers <laughs> sitting at this table right yeah, now? Yes. Oh, well, yes. Sorry. Okay, so this is the why other I actually two went, couldn't show up tonight. This is why I actually <laughs> went Gen Con is because I want to go with you and this thing will blow the fuck up because <laughs> I, it, I, you guys will be doing Gen Con things. I'm like not invested in Gen Con, so if I go there and just shamelessly, I'm just saying, promote, I know a restaurant around. right next to Gen Con that has a lot of Gen Con people. Mm-hmm. So, are we going to? Are we going to? Oh, we're going to fuck that hog so hard. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll <clears> pound that bacon <throat> into tomorrow. People will be hearing that. This is my hog. official request <laughs> off for Hughes Culinary. I, I, so you were talking about I... creation versus destruction in art. I have officially blown up a few projects in my time. I'm the the founding member of a a, a, a Facebook group known as Tasteful Nude Photography, which is now at 2.6k members. Yeah, yeah. growing was, every nice. day. It was started as an actual photography project because I wanted to do nude photography, and it's really weird to talk about with people. And, and, you can and it, it just turned into shit posting. It well, eleven oh, it years pending. later, because uh, <laughs> I would see these dudes try to join over the years, and I was just like, they fucking think this is like a sharing group where they get to see <laughs> new people, and they're like, you fucking creepy assholes. <laughs> you have to like design the questions in order to weed them out. We Sometimes do. you weed them in, though. Yeah, no, no. I, me and me and Dustin, who's a, a lawyer, he's an ex army sniper. Uh, I added him to the group and, and uh, made them admin. And we literally make threats to the group chat all the time. Like, if somebody doesn't come in here in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to add all fucking 24 of these fuckers. <laughs> 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 
Oh yes, it's everyone. It's rare, but every once in a while we get one of those dudes in that like you guys have accepted because you know this is a dude that thinks this is a real nude chat, and we're gonna have a field day with this guy. <laughs> so, so yeah, my, in cool my way. mind, and me as a non-military trained person was just like, all right, so I've got this pocket here that these people want to get in. If I let them into the pocket and then tell my friends to attack, <laughs> they're fucking trapped. It's a pincer move. So I was just we like, call that an ambush. <laughs> yeah. So, so I went on Facebook and I was just like, I was like. If I accept all these fucking creepy assholes, will all of you join this group to share the worst things that you can think of? <laughs> and it this blew up. This is my artistic butthole. It, it blew up. Yeah, my my artistic medium after going to art school is now Facebook shitposting. Okay. <laughs> now I can become the art rapist. I am somewhat of an art rapist. And really, but it's so only towards creepy dudes okay and weirdly like so i I'm not sure took we're some art classes yes. in college art i mean it's mostly just like i couldn't figure out what i wanted to do but i always really liked art so every single alt like the alternate classes you could take electives that's what yes. they're called yeah my i would take them in arts but electives. <laughs> i only did arts for my electives and then i took kept taking elective art classes without thinking because i you know Gave up on the fact that I had a major and just kept taking classes. Yep. Um, so all I did all and I loved it so much. And all I got at the end of this was kind of what Who's I said at the beginning. <laughs> is that at the end of the day, people stop thinking they're worth making art. Around eighth or uh, eighth grade freshman so. year, they start getting really self conscious that people should just keep making art regardless of it. I, used to I draw decided if I actually fire. get to be an art teacher yeah. at some point, I want to be that teacher eighth, seventh, eighth freshman, <laughs> sophomore year where you really have influence into these like crazy hormonal fucking teenagers mm -hmm. that think they're worthless because they are only worth what other people see of them. And they smell like and, spirits. I mean, that's yes, completely <laughs> not technically involved in the art process, though. That's true. I got uh, pee teenagers like, so tell so well, what I was bad. Say but, is, but uh, yeah. what I like the, the end of this is that, that all I want people to know about art is that you should do it for yourself at the end of the day. It's great if other people enjoy it, but at the end of the day, you should make yourself enjoy the fact that you're doing art. You should take Can't do it. solace <laughs> in the fact that you enjoy what you're doing. You're, you're doing do. it to blow off steam. You're doing it to... Uh, to have the end time right like i'm not doing anything right now let me sketch this guess what even if it sucks it's fine because i'm drawing to draw and that's fine i think like if i ever get to be that art teacher which is maybe my end goal in a career you should to be, be fine. that art teacher i would love for even just one student to take that away from the class is that even mm -hmm. if I don't end up being an artist, I can still enjoy to draw. So, um, Matt mentioned that, you know, he, he went to school for art and then ended up his preferred medium being Facebook shit posting, <laughs> which I, I, I have written down as a question. What is your preferred medium? I assume colorful that it's it's pen and paper actually no my that. maybe crafts some my craft. preferred medium is 3d so i've actually learned that i really like to make things out of um okay, sculpture. styrofoam sculpture. sculpture okay um and sculpture in so many different forms like mm -hmm. i i've attempted wood but i don't have the right tools right. to sculpt wood but I do have the tools to sculpt out of styrofoam. And I have a 3D gun, which is really cool to use and fun. What is a and 3D mod gun? So 3D gun is, like <laughs> is basically a miniature glue gun. Okay. So glue guns, you can design lots of things, but the glue takes a little bit to dry. Mm -hmm. The 3D gun dries very quickly, so you can build up. Fairly quickly and make tiny sculptures. Now, so kind of like the it's like a 3D printer, 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 but like, like, like it is. It like, is like a 3D, 3D printer. printer. It is a 3D printer printer that you control. The 3D pistol. 
Yeah, the three D printer, printer is ideal if you have the computer software and you know exactly the thing. But if you don't know those stuff, then you can use this little three D gun to build up your whole thing. My definite preferred medium would be three D. It is so vague. Yep. I can use paint. I can draw. I can use my three D gun. I can layer up fifteen damn layers of styrofoam and carve the thing. I That's accidentally like definitely my medium. So I accidentally you, ended up in a 3D class. I thought that it was going to be like 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 digital 3D animation or something like that when I was in LA. When I was at Northridge, so I took this 3D class and the way that the class description was worded, I just assumed that that's what it was, like it was that vague. And I ended up in like a 3D a sculpting 3D class. Yeah, and I ended up in a 3D sculpting class, and it wasn't like because if it was clay, I was like, oh, God, I love th like 3D clay sculpt, like clay sculpting. I love that. I would love that class, but that's not what it was. It was like you're gonna make all this shit from all this smaller shit, <laughs> and I'm gonna give you like no direction. <laughs> Heard. I, did, I, I love that. Class. I love that challenge. Let's go. I did love that class. I met a lot of some of the like, like all the people gonna roll that I up my sleeves here. All of the people We're that I remember on. from Northridge that I actually made friends with from Northridge were in just that Having class. that kind of challenge is a very true more motivator where it's like, you mm -hmm. can't do this. Do it. Prove it. I'm like, got it. Let's go. So you, <laughs> Ready? You, you talked about people losing their creativity or their drive for creativity. Yes. So when I was in college at NKU, I was in a, our foundation classes. One of them was, a con it was called Concepts. And so it was, it was a lot like... Producers the, are arguing. Sorry about that. He hates his tail. Yeah. His own tail. <laughs> um, there was this guy in the class that was like in his 40s. And he was like a construction like contract worker. And the guy was like such a working class dude that he came in there every day smelling like... the You could smell the alcohol on his skin from the bar like that night before. And he like his skin was like so working class tan it was like reddish purple mm -hmm. like you know what i'm kind of dude i'm talking about yeah but that dude decided he wanted to go to art school and like there would be there was one assignment that was like create a tool for create a, it was like create a tool for like that isn't for like a conceptual purpose i'm trying to think of the right way to describe it was like like don't create a tool to pick up this beer can. Like, think of an idea that's abstract and create a tool that would do that. And 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 he like made this thing out of like clay that would like help him with his contracting job. Mm. So he like wanted to be creative, but like couldn't. So he still had the drive for creativity. He couldn't think outside of utility. Yeah, but even in an abstract class and an abstract assignment. He, he, you know, he wanted to. He, he had been, I think, too programmed and lost too much at that point to like be that open to the assignment. But he still wanted to do it. And I would argue that it, while the first, you know, like how even if it was the first five assignments, he didn't do great. If he kept at it, he'd get there. If he mm -hmm. kept believing in himself, if he kept believing, I can do it. I can create this thing that is abstract. I could get there, even if his first few attempts were cool, but not quite there. Well, this goes into the question: What is an artist? Because that he, it was on the list of questions. He, All right, so he, let's hold off on that one. We'll come back to it. Is that cool? Yeah, we're we're talking about our favorite back. mediums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. truth. Yeah. Okay. However, we haven't uh, gotten any close to that. Yet. Well, we haven't gotten to Dave. Yeah, haven't gotten to you. But okay. just to address that, sometimes there are people who just can't get there. Sometimes a bird is too broken to fly. That's a fucking country song if I ever heard it. <laughs> yeah, I sound. Listen here, Leon. I, I am the red ibis of art. <laughs> I will come to the scarlet ibis. Scarlet ibis. I, I am, yes, I'm the scarlet, scarlet ibis of art. I will get very far and then die. God, that is a heartbreaking story. <laughs> uh, what's the time? We might need to. <laughs> yeah, we're, this. We're, we're like right there, I think. Maybe a little bit past. Yeah. Okay, so we're at almost an hour. Yeah, I think we need to take another break. And, and this will be. Continue when we come back, right? This this will be the break for the episode, and then we'll record part two. Oh, so you. Well, okay, but we're in the middle. We're in the middle of a part, though. We're still talking about what our favorite 
Medium. Medium yeah. is. We should probably finish that before we move on to the second no. part. I haven't. Considered <laughs> you want to break in the middle of the uh, in the <laughs> middle of an? We should it, let's finish that and then we'll break into the next part. I, I haven't said my favorite medium. You, you, a lot. Many I of us haven't. Clockwise here. I, I don't go clockwise. Wittershins. Time, concept. <laughs> Time ticking away. Okay, it's so where? What are we doing right now? The moment. All right, uh, right now. Um, I, it's fine to take a break because we're like an we'll, hour. We'll but. take a break. We'll come back and finish, quickly, and then then we'll start part two. All right. <laughs> Meine Kunden. It's springtime, and you know what that means. Reverend Reich's righteous victories with Lil Fioro's confectionery. The mandates are in, and the order is for flavor. Save our superior stock of Deutschland Schweiz with our Beiters Jungen favorites like Panzer Blasts, roasted peanut clusters coated in diesel chocolate, or Sturmgebärs, gummy stormtroopers with hearts of literal steel. Our fronts are lining up with envious allied troops, so grab those ration stamps and pick up Little Fuero's confections today. Ein Geschmack, ein Volk. Welcome back. We were talking about our preferred mediums in, in the art that we do. Well, that the panel does, because I don't do art. Sure I was going to say my preferred medium is Miss Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> really? I feel like the. I feel like that's so like psychic, like uh, the, the medium. Parts, I maybe? thought she was either dead or in jail. <laughs> she, I thought that like, she is actually dead. Was... She had cancer. Oh, oh, so in permanent jail. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, she didn't catch it early enough. Art mediums. I'm not going to be the one responsible for derailing this one. I Who's already kind of spoke about my sculpture. Dave, it's actually so yours. Dave. Is it my turn? Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Well, I mean, as far as preferred mediums go. There's the medium that I use, which is storytelling, animation, usually, but mostly storytelling and illustration. That's what I actually do, but if I had to choose a medium that I indulge in more than anything else, it would be music. So that, those are, I mean, that's basically it. When it comes to my preferred mediums, the medium that I like to work in is illustration or animation, because it's storytelling. I can do whatever I want. Come up with my own. <laughs> so you say you say illustration. Do you mean markers and paper or? I work digitally now, mm -hmm. so digital illustration and um, mostly it, it has to tie into storytelling. Everything I do has to tie into storytelling in one way or another because I need. It's open. I need I need there whatever I'm doing to have some sort of meaningful context to it. So I don't really do a lot of I don't do a lot of abstract stuff. I mean I'm, I write poetry and things like that, but it's never gonna it's never so abstract that you have to like. It's not abstract art the way that people think of it. Where you look art. at the art and you have to find the meaning in it within yourself. Right. There's always ex. Well, whenever I create something, I have like the I'm impulse sure that I have. Down before you close it. The impulse that I have is to make it something that can be indulged in easily on the surface, but has a whole bunch of crazy shit going on underneath it. Like, if you really want to dive into it, you could dive... I, I like things that are multi-layered. So if I'm telling a story, I like there to be an explicit story that's easy for people to follow. But if you're really paying attention, you can see how everything's structured up underneath it, and you can make all of these... Like, you know me, you've called me... What was it you said? Like, because I like everything to be meaningful. Like, every... Every tiny decision that I make has some sort of connection to it. Mm -hmm. Anal retentive? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so I like... Interesting. I like storytelling because I can layer it. I can make it... I can make it something that people can indulge in on, like, relatively superficially, but then you can, like, I like to make it... Parts of it go as deep as I can possibly make it go. Um, yeah, but when with music, it's kind of like... It's kind of the same thing. But that's the kind of stuff that I like to indulge in more. Where it's like I, I, my taste in music tends to people tend to think is relatively superficial because of the type of artists that I like, because a lot of it is pop rock and things like that. But I tend to like artists that have, like you can look at it that way. But if you really dive into it, there's all this other crap underneath it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it is interesting because like. I go the complete opposite way because I'm really bad at the double meanings. Like, I'm really bad at reading into what the artist has on their second mm. meaning. Mm -hmm. I'm good at the superficial. The what the person says is what they mean. I, I mm -hmm. get that. But I've always been extra bad at that. We're going to touch on that at the beginning of part two. Cool. 
Uncle Rezo, what is your preferred medium? The Porn. theremin. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Porn. Okay. <clears throat> and all, jokes aside, yes, I really like visual mediums. Um, this is indulging in them, but honestly, what I've done most personally has been writing. Like, uh, it's, but it's more of a, hmm, where does role-playing game, where do, where do, like, IRL role-playing games? Storytelling. Is, yeah, storytelling. Story yeah, that's... Well, also performance art. Yeah. Yeah, performance art and, uh, storytelling. That's, that's my preferred medium if we go by what I, I do. Even though I am also, I draw, I write, I make cocktails, I cook... Most of the things I do are some form of art or cre or creative in general. I mean, that that's my bag. It's interactive storytelling. I mean, anything role playing. That's basically what it boils down to: is interactive storytelling. And uh, well, that's 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 it. Unlike I, I don't have like a two to five minute thing to say about it. It's just. It's what I like. He says three minutes in. <laughs> I like porn. I like food. I like food porn. <laughs> to be... F I'm, I'm not going to skip myself on this one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, the Fallout 4 creation engine. <laughs> I like I like building stuff in that. Mm -hmm. Probably my favorite part of the game. Oh, shut up. You're a martial artist. Hey. That's not that saying true. that's not art. No, that's what he's saying. No, it, like, it is mm -hmm. art. That's what he's saying. You literally um, I don't it. get it. I don't know what. Talking it's about sword play and taekwondo aside. Is it closer to you are? What is your preferred medium, Matt? Uh, when I was in art school, my favorite visual medium, strictly from the creation of the handmade arts, was printmaking, because it involved drawing, it involved carving, it involved production. It involved painting. It involved it, everything. It was it was everything that I had worked up to that point. Painting, drawing, you know, three D media. Also the, you know, the whole birthing process of being in a dark room. It was very much like that, where that had been robbed from me from the you know them killing the dark room and going digital. But I don't really make much visual art these days. I actually took my painting supplies to my friend's house, who was a painter and uh, then left them with him and then I think I drunkenly just gave them to him or <laughs> uh, it's a it's a false memory I don't know but I, I, I can't ask him for my painting supplies back even when I think about painting every now and again it's not that expensive to get back into painting but um, I am a musician and my one of my main art forms is the guitar so music I think is my current preferred medium, but there was a medium that I felt very called to and I felt very good at, and I almost got to. I, I bought myself this expensive used camcorder, an old can. It was a Canon. It was like 1080p, like professional quality, like uh, camera. And I, I was in school, and I was actually studying like video editing and audio editing, and and you know I'd always wanted to act and be an actor i loved that and i i love production and i was a photographer and i studied photography for decades or for a decade and um film production or video production the 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 4 4d uh, media so you've got 2d which is drawing mm -hmm. painting or whatever 3d which is also painting or sculpting or carving yeah. and then the fourth dimension in mathematics is time and so 4D art involves either audio, video, performance. Like there's 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 different elements to to fourth dimension art, and with with that it was it was I had the photography aspect of the camera. I had like the art aspect of the whole creation. I I could create. I could be in it. I could perform. I could produce, and then I could also use 
art, like uh, music and editing, and it was everything. So I think the, re the reason why I love printmaking, the reason why I love video production is because it includes all of the things that I'm interested in. So I, my- Omnimedia. Omnimedia, or, or just, just being able to incorporate everything that you're about. So I'm a songwriter and I'm a musician and I'm an ex-photographer. And, uh, but I really love printmaking, but it's that kind of thing you really have to have access to, like, a studio or the production of, otherwise you have to, you know, do it your own, figure it out. Okay. I think that's why I like animation, or film in general, because, like... Or, so, or storytelling in general. Well, it's what it is. It's, like, it's storytelling. You're, you're, you're writing. There's writing involved. There's cinematography involved. So you're using every dimension to do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, music. There's music involved. That's why I love film. Well, I'm not blend just so yeah. many things, and, and if you're and if it's animated film, you're blending almost all the things. Because people always want to pigeonhole you, or they want to think of you the best, the easiest way they know you, mm -hmm. and so it's like, oh well, David draws. Oh well, David makes animation. Oh well, I don't play the fucking guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Yet they don't. No, but uh, and so yeah, it's it's nice to find ways to incorporate everything that you're into. That's one of the things about podcasting. You get to learn and talk about all the things that you're interested in and that you know or want to know. Yeah. What is yeah. art? Who are people? What is things? This this podcast started as an excuse for me to argue with Dave. Mm. I, I, you <laughs> never told me that. <laughs> I, I never needed that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's like, I didn't need that. I can just call Dave and we'll argue about something. <laughs> Yeah, the really funny thing recently was was Dave was sick with a fever, and I texted him just on a whim, or some shit, and he was just like, I can't really deal with this right now. <laughs> it's just like, this is the one time where, where, where Dave is like, not keeping his cool, because he's just like, I'm so used to it. You know, it's just like, like <laughs> I, he used to be fucking with him, that like he's he's having a fever, and he's overloaded with shit, it's just like, he... He actually can't take it right now, and I'm actually not fucking with him right now. <laughs> or maybe I was, but I wasn't. I didn't realize that I was doing mm. it in a way that would trigger you. What I personally loved uh, is someone who likes to lay on the outskirts and almost a creepy medium of the social media thing. Where it's like you had posted and you had tagged me in a post about this specific podcast, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you commented on it. I was like, how? Dare you not invite me? Which is, I read like, that and I saw that's how forgot. he got invited. Right, it's like he's like, I kind of forgot you had it. Like you had a way to get here. Like you were in Cincinnati. I get kind of forgot. And it's just like the interaction between you two was just fantastic. And I just like kind of enjoying it. Just looking back on it. I mean, art as conversation. <laughs> this is. Fantastic. I think that is one of the. I, I'll give myself this. I think that is one of the benefits to. It, I, I'd like to think the benefits of being my friend is that you can call me out in public and we'll have a conversation about it in public and it doesn't bother me. <laughs> well, the and and that was you know we've talked about manipulative or deceptive tactics and I have not been quiet about my love of your podcast and my want to be on it we we had we had a, a a fun time where we engaged and made a podcast which was just a rambling of us having a mm -hmm. conversation which i didn't really consider to be an arbitrary podcast it was it was a mini sewed out in the wild mm -hmm. you know but um i was like i want to be on that fucking podcast <laughs> <laughs> i win no. <laughs> no, no, no. But, I, but I was, it was just like, uh, we're doing an episode on what is art. And I was just like, I'm a fucking art school dropout. This is my in. <laughs> I was just Welcome like, to the club. I was like, I was like how are you not going to fucking tap me on the art podcast? I was like, I got a car now, motherfucker. Yeah, and then, you and then, didn't when we first thought about I it. Know, I know, I know. But but so the thing is, the funny thing is that you, were, you gave me plenty of time. And I was like, I'm going to even do research. And then when I got here, I was like, well, you guys didn't like ask me to do research. So like... <laughs> And you know, it was a bunch. You way over prep. I uh, well, no. I, oh I, no, he I, didn't. He planned on over prepping, and then, in true I, Matt Gamble fashion, did not prep at all. I over planned on prepping. Heard. I over planned on prepping. Heard. <laughs> now, is friendship an art? <coughs> well, yes. we'll get into that later. <laughs> so, no, uh, relationships are an art. Well, uh, mm. friendship is a concept. No, relationships are an art. But is me having a gun an art? <laughs> yeah, no, don't you just go there. All right, well, that we're going to call it for part one here, and we will have part two out next week. Like hell we will. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Upon being dead, then. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. We hope you've enjoyed this, and um, we look forward to listening to you, you listening to us, however you want to phrase that next time. So have a good night, Arbitrators. We love you. Bye-bye. All five of you. <laughs> Some of here. which are us. <laughs> <laughs> I love me too. <laughs> <laughs>